You're locked on to the EYT Media Network. And good evening and welcome to uh, Red Bank Valley High School. Tonight it is the District 9 semifinal contest between the Port Allegheny Gators and the Red Bank Valley Bulldogs. Mike Kalinowski along with uh, Bob Dunkel. We get Tyler Oaks Hill here, the whole crew ready to go as we get set here from high atop the stadium at Red Bank Valley High School. We're in the Carly Tire pregame show, and Bob, uh, Red Bank got a chance to sit out last week, relax a little bit, get ready for this one, and uh, Keystone. Uh, came up short against uh, Port Allegheny to bring uh, Port into this uh, ball game here tonight. And the winner of this one will move on to take on either Union AC Valley or Smithport in the championship next week. Well, you know, obviously for Red Bank, the week off is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because you get the opportunity to rest up a little bit, lick a few wounds, let some things heal. But it's kind of a curse a little wee bit because, again, you're in that rhythm. Look, you know, they've had a, a very strong season. And they rebounded for that uh, from that opening game lost Mike and they've ran the table since then they, they've looked very strong they're quick everything is going you know you're, you're in a wonderful point in the season then all of a sudden you get the week off so we're going to see whether or not that week off is a little bit of hindrance I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of rust here as we start off of course last week we had the opportunity to see Port Allegheny in action and it was a fun game it was old school football if you're into the high flying offense you might have been a little disappointed but for those of us who like to see the grinded out the methodical rhythm, the, the flow of the game, the offensive lineman doing a strong job. That's what you had the opportunity to see last week. All right, and we're going to come up here. We'll go inside the game, and then we'll go around the district, tell you about the other games going on tonight. We'll have the governor's keys to the game. That is what the entire district gets ready for. They always get ready for those governor's keys to the game. We'll talk about the field conditions, weather, all that coming up, and uh, then we'll lead us right up to kickoff time here tonight. It is Port Allegheny here against Red Bank Valley. We're going to take our first time out. And you are watching Carly Tire High School Football. It is the District 9 semifinal, and it's right here on Explore Clary and D9Sports.com. risk to your future could be running out of money during a longer than expected retirement. Many people have not yet taken the time to determine if they will have enough assets to last throughout retirement. Our retirement income evaluator can help you develop a roadmap and actual recommendations. To learn more, stop by our office located at 162 South 2nd Avenue in Clarion. Give us a call at 222-3990 or visit JennyClarion.com. Jenny Montgomery Scott, LLC, member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. Best of luck in the playoffs to all our local football teams. From your one-stop car, truck, and SUV dealer, Clarion Ford Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. Visit us on Main Street in Clarion or start online at clarionauto.com. Throughout West Central Pennsylvania, people are losing their glasses. Well, they haven't really lost them. They just don't need them anymore. Thanks to the amazing LASIK surgeons at Laurel Eye Clinic. Call Laurel Eye Clinic and schedule your free consultation. Whether it's your ATV, your camper, plenty of room, keep it coming, your boat, keep dumping water, me boy, or whatever your big kid toy may be, make sure you protect it. Carrier Insurance Agency will help establish a policy to protect your ATV, camper, boat, motorcycle, or any auto insurance coverage you may need. Receive your free quote at Carrier Insurance Agency in front of Tractor Supply and Clarion or CarrierInsuranceCares.com. With so much to protect each day, Eric Schick Insurance and Financial Services is here to help you find the right coverage that fits your life. Call 814-275-2210 to learn more. Located in Parker, Emlinton and Clarion, UFP Parker LLC is currently hiring for several skill levels, including general labor, assembler and forklift operators. For more information, visit UFPI.com forward slash careers. I can't remember being off that bad. Are we on? This is the EYT Media Network. All 
All right, back here at Red Bank Valley High School. It is the Carly Tire High School Football Game of the Week. We are in the District 9 semifinal contest as Port Allegheny visits Red Bank Valley tonight. And we're going to go inside the game this evening, brought to you by All Seasons Temporaries. Well, Bob, last week we had a chance to see Port Allegheny in action against the Keystone Panthers. And one of the things that this team's uh, really built on, it is called ball control. And they like to just run that football, and they will take all all the time off the clock. They burned in that first series they had against Keystone. They took about uh, seven, almost eight minutes off the clock in their very first possession. Mike, if you talk to a lot of the coaches, they will tell you that the best defense you can have is a good, strong offense. In other words, an offense that takes time off the clock. Again, if your opponent can't touch the football, they can't score. And that's what we saw last week. You know, uh, Keystone actually did a decent job defending them, but it was a matter of their average and three, four plus yards of play. They're in makeable situations to convert third downs, um, you know, and they're able to do that. And, and very methodical, and of course, that's coached in them. You know, they didn't snap the ball until there was down to three, two seconds or so left on the down clock. And that's just good fundamental coaching. You know, sometimes, unfortunately, at this level, you'll see players oftentimes snap the ball with 10, 15 seconds. Well, you start and do that, in this case, 34 plays that first half, you take 10 extra seconds off, that adds up because it's not just 10 seconds you're taking off. It's the time after the down. There's that lack of a better term. It's kind of a, a dead time before the clock starts again. So all those things add up, and, and that's, again, part of their success. And I think it was a great MO. That was one of my keys in last week's ball game. Look, control the tempo of the game. And I actually felt, too, for Keystone, that's what they want to do. Folks, whenever you realize that Keystone only ran nine plays that first half, that is a team there that knows how to manage the clock. If they only have the opportunity to manage nine, that puts a lot of additional pressure on the the opponent because their their touches are limited. Yep. And uh, two, when you look at Red Bank Valley, this is a high powered offense. They like to score. Uh, Bry uh, Bryson Bain, uh, twenty five touchdown passes, just four interceptions, fourteen hundred yards. Uh, they've got uh, guys that can run the football. Of course, Shrek and Goss with five hundred eighty five yards on the season, and they like they like to move the ball quickly up and down the court. And that big question mark is, will they be able to do that tonight? Well, that, that's just it. Now, the good news is they got a good surface to work with. Um, you know, beginning part of the week looked like there was an opportunity for rain, the field to be a little on the sloppy side. Um, it looks great. You cannot ask for a better-looking field here than what we see here in November. Well, that is uh, certainly true, and that's going inside the game here. And we're going to take a timeout. We're going to come back. We'll look around the district tonight, let you know what's going on there. We'll take a look at the field conditions, weather forecast. It's all coming up. Governor's Keys is also on the way. Take our first time out, or second time out, I guess, here of the evening. And uh, we have a good one for you tonight. Port Allegheny is here at Red Bank Valley. It is the District 9, one of our semifinal games being broadcast here on the EYT Media Network. And it's live right here on ExploreClarionD9Sports.com. Red Bank Chevrolet, the area's number one Chevrolet dealer and Clarion County's truck headquarters. So if you're in the market for a new or used Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV, go to Red Bank Chevrolet, 500 Broad Street in New Bethlehem, or online redbankchevrolet.com. Skilled staff at Red Bank Chevrolet is ready to meet all of your automotive needs. If we don't see you today, we'll see you at Red Bank Chevrolet. J&J Trailers and Equipment Sales on Route 66 in Shippenville is your one-stop trailer shop for all things trailers. J&J stocks over 70 trailers at a time of all shapes and sizes, including enclosed cargoes, equipment haulers, utility trailers, tilt trailers, and dump trailers. Reputable brands include CarMate, Sport Haven, PJ, Liberty, and Wells Cargo. If you are looking for the most dependable trailers on the market, backed by the industry's best warranty, choose J&J Trailers and Equipment Sales. Trailers that work for a living. He's on the 30, he's on the 20, he's on the 10, it's a touchdown! There's nothing like football, the lights, the cheers of the crowd, and getting a chance to see our local athletes and kids give it all they've got. Come to a game, support our local schools. Clarion County Community Bank, a better way to bank. Member FDIC. Visit us online at clarionbank.com. Hi, my name is Jason, and welcome to Sweet Basil. Come on in.
Hey, Julie, nice deck. Did you get that at Tio Nesta Builder Supply? It's Tio Nesta Builder Supply. And yes, Dave, I did. Wonder if they sell siding and roofing at Tio Nesta Builder Supply. It's Tio Nesta. And yes, Tio Nesta Builder Supply has that too. Come on, Dave. You've never been there? They have two showrooms for anything home improvement. Mom got a custom kitchen there. Bill down the street got the materials for his garage. They have this awesome website, www.tianestabuilders.us. You can buy online. They really have everything for the home. Wow, I'm heading over to Tio Nesta. (laughs) I know, I know. Tianesta Builders. Tianesta Builders Supply Home Improvement Center. Family owned and operated since 1958 with locations in Tianesta and Shippenville. That sounds good. I'll check them out online at tianestabuilders.us. Located in Parker, Emlinton, and Clarion, UFP Parker LLC is currently hiring for several skill levels, including general labor, assembler, and forklift operators. For more information, visit ufpi.com forward slash careers. You're listening to the EYT Media Network. All right, back here at Red Bank Valley High School, Mike Kalinowski, Governor Bob Dunkel, rocking and rolling here in the uh, Carly Tire pregame show. It is Port Allegheny taking on Red Bank Valley tonight. It is the District 9 semifinal, the other one that we have broadcasting tonight on the EYT Media Network is uh, Union as they host Smithport. So we have both of those going on. We'll also have scores from the Clarion and Carn City contest going on down at Carn City. I believe, isn't uh, Kilroy down there? I'm sure he is. Yeah, so he'll be down there taking care of all that. Uh, so we'll have stuff coming from all over the place, and you'll be able later on in the game to look at the bottom of your screen as we'll have scores scrolling on the bottom there. That's if Tyler knows how to do that. Well, you know, our producer, <laughs> look at Bison him, look at Oaks, like, tonight assuming the duties. You know, he's a, he's a great camera guy, but he can do it all. So he's yeah. going to slide over here. He said, Dustin, I've had a gut full of your Tom Fullery. I'm taking over. I'm going to show you how you do things. Well, so. I'm telling you, so far, he's given Dustin a run for his money. Dustin should be kind of worried. <laughs> yeah. All right. So around District 9 tonight, these oh, are the scores you're going to see at the bottom of the screen. You'll have Smithport uh, at Union AC Valley. That's the other Class A uh, um Semi-final in Class AA. Brookville is at Ridgeway. Central Clarion's at Carn City, and we'll have those scores. Another game, uh, we'll see if we can get scores on that or not. Bre- uh, uh, Bedford and Clearfield starting in the uh, state playoffs uh, tonight. So that goes around District 9. Field conditions are brought to you by Cousin Basil and Bob. I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Bill Maganotti and the crews down here, what a fantastic job on this field. This looks like, honestly, we're back in September, beginning of the season. Uh, that's that's what kind of shape it's in, even with all of the weather that we've had. Well, you know, it's amazing. Of course, this field gets has an awful lot of activity on the field, as you say, Mike. It, it looks like it's clear back into September. You couldn't ask for right now a, a nicer high school natural grass surface than what you're seeing here. Uh, again, we had a little bit of uh, precis- or precipitation yesterday, um, but uh, not, not enough really to – to cause anybody to worry, but especially, again, the condition of this field tonight, it's outstanding. You're not going to see a better surface for this, which should bode well for this Bulldog offense. Of course, it's an offense that's predicated on speed. They do have a ton of it, and the field will not be a factor tonight. Again, field conditions are brought to you by Cousin Basil and, of course, Bill Maganotti here at Red Bank Valley. want to thank him. Uh, Weather forecast is sponsored by J&J Feeds and Needs and Trailer Sales. And, well, tonight temps should fall into the upper 30s. There is a chance of rain and snow, but later on it should hold off for the ball game. And they don't expect any accumulation, at least tonight, for that snow. So it looks okay that way. Uh, So far, been pretty good. Bob's a little chilly, but... It's below 70, so naturally (laughs) I'm going to be chilly. (laughs) So there you go. And I do want to thank all the folks here at Red Bank Valley for rolling out the red carpet to us and all of the staff here. uh, Always doing a fantastic job for us, and uh, that is sponsored by McMillan's Carpet Outlet. They're uh, located up there uh, near I-80, just uh, near Clarion. So I want to thank those folks as well. I'll tell you, and uh, another great sponsor I want to mention, the big sponsor of Red Bank Valley uh, Sports 2 is Heater Lumber. They're one of the biggies, and uh, we do want to thank them for uh, their sponsorship 
of uh, the Red Bank Valley uh, broadcast that we do. So we're going to take another time out here as uh, Tyler will get all set up. And we're going to come back. We'll have the governor's keys to the game. They're coming up. We'll also have the national anthem. That'll be coming up. We'll have the coin toss that Bob always likes. It's all on the way. Tonight it is Port Allegheny here at Red Bank Valley. It's the District 9 semifinal. And you're watching Carly Tire High School Football right here on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Zocro Motor Truck Sales in Clarion is an international Diamond Ed certified service department. As one of only 276 such shops in all of North America, you can be sure that when your medium or heavy-duty truck needs service, the job will be done correctly at Zocro Motors. Our work is guaranteed nationwide at any international truck dealer, and our parts and service prices can't be beaten. Our technicians are factory trained and factory certified. Don't trust a shop that just thinks that they can make repairs. Come to Zocro Motors Diamond Edge Certified Service Department. If it's maintenance you need, click ZocroMotors.com or call us for a quote on those jobs too. Our prices are great. Best of all, you know the repair is done right and it's guaranteed. Get your truck service work done at Zocro Motor Truck Sales, two miles north of exit 64, Interstate 80 in Clarion. Enjoy fabulous fine dining in a casual, elegant atmosphere at the Allegheny Grill in Foxburg. Take in the breathtaking view through the windowed walls or dine on the patio overlooking the always changing Allegheny River. No matter how cold it is outside, you can keep warm and toasty inside with a built-in-the-USA super-efficient furnace from Luton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Affordable, quiet, and reliable, you can count on your furnace from Luton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. West Park Rehab Physical Therapy, providing traditional physical therapy plus diagnostic testing to include EMG nerve conduction study and musculoskeletal ultrasounds. Beverage Air, a leading manufacturer of refrigeration equipment for over 75 years, is currently hiring for immediate openings in our Brookville facility. For more information or to apply, visit beverageair.com forward slash careers. Beverage Air, a leading man. You're listening to the EYT Media Network. All right, back here at uh, Red Bank Valley High School. We're the Carly Tire pregame show as Port Allegheny visits Red Bank Valley tonight here in the District 9 semifinal. The other one, Smithport against Union AC Valley. That's going on over at uh, Union High School tonight, and that's also here on the EYT Media Network, so you can watch both, uh, keep flipping back and forth, whatever you want to do. Uh, I'll tell you, great football coming your way. We try to bring as much as we can. We do apologize. Would have loved to have brought that clarion Carn City game as well and uh, just had one little snafu, and we almost w worked that out too. Uh, but you can only do what you can do. Yeah, limited at times with the manpower and the equipment. We certainly strive to bring the best and sports coverage to you. Well, Carn City also said, too, is Bob coming? I said, no. They said, no, nope, forget it. I don't know. I'd have pulled some strings, got <laughs> Sam to, to let me in. Teams are coming on the uh, football field. We'll have the anthem coming up momentarily as Bob snapping some photos here. I have to tell you, too, they passed out towels uh, yeah. for the fans here at Red Bank, uh, little white towels. Those were awesome. They were kind enough to offer me one, and I said, no. 
I'd like to have one, but save it for the fans. I know I, I got up here where you and I were talking. I did the same thing. I took it. I took it, and I'm going to sell it on eBay. I believe our, <laughs> our director, Bison Oaks, would be tempted to do the same thing. Well, he may use that to maybe put some uh, softer material inside those uh, pants of his. As well, he should. Yeah, he could do that. All right, Robert, how about uh, those keys to the game here tonight? As uh, we get set for this one, keys to the game are brought to you by uh, Kale's Kitchens. And uh, how does it stack up, first of all, for Port Allegheny? Look, it's really simple here. For Port Allegheny, slow and steady. Ball control, clock management. You have to establish the run. Patience is the key. Patience both offensively and on that defensive side as well. And, of course, here's the other big thing. Don't surrender the big play while you're on defense. And, obviously, you're facing a team that does love to score on those big plays. For Red Bank Valley, it's real simple. Stop the run. You know, keep Port away from getting into a rhythm. In other words, you can't allow them to, to run 34 plays in the first half. Uh, because it, it's just going to completely change the complexion of the ball game. Certainly, I think Redback has to spread the ball around to multiple weapons, get different guys involved. That's also going to force Port to take some chances, I think, on the defensive side. Defense needs to force some turnovers as well. And the other big key is, Mike, you need four full quarters. You can't let Port Allegheny hang around because a team that can run the football effectively, a team that can manage the clock, can be a big thorn in your side. You know, the reality is the way if Port gets into that ball control offense again, Mike, that means literally if you want to win, you have to score almost every other time you touch the football, and you don't want to get into that rhythm. Okay, again, the Governor's Keys brought to you by Kale's Kitchens as he likes a look at both of these teams. We'll have the anthem coming up here momentarily, and then we'll have the uh, ceremonial coin toss in the middle of the field, Bob Dunkel's favorite portion of the football game. That'll be on the way. So Port Allegheny... Kneeling on the far side of the field, giving together is uh, the team. And we'll have the anthem coming up here. And why don't we, as they do that, we'll take a time out. We're going to come back. We'll have more for you here from Red Bank Valley High School. And again, it is uh, Port Allegheny here at Red Bank Valley. It's a District 9 semifinal, and it's right here. Carly Tire High School Football and Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. You can afford a gorgeous, custom-designed hardwood Kale's Kitchen for a lot less than you'd pay at a DIY store. Go to FactoryDirectKitchens.net. At Kale's, there are never middleman markups or hidden charges that can add 40%. Go to FactoryDirectKitchens.net. That's FactoryDirectKitchens.net. here at Red Bank Valley High School. Mike Kalinowski, Governor Bob Dunkel. We're getting now set for the teams uh, to come out here on the football field. Red Bank Valley in their black uniforms, black tops, black bottoms, the red letters and numbers, and the red helmets for Port Allegheny. They have on the 
uh, goldish dark uh, helmets with the white jerseys and the black pants. And we're just about set to go here. You know, still plenty of uh, good seats out and about, Mike. If you, if the fans out there are thinking about coming down, catching a good game, you know, behind us on the rails to trails, oftentimes you'll see spectators back there. They're there as well. We are on top two. We're we're feeling the elements right along with Tyler and crew tonight. And Tyler's smile, and he's like, "Yeah, hey, you guys are gonna be cool." Yeah, Bison Oaks wears the appropriate apparel. There's no question about it. Hearing a little bit of noise from the fans now. As the Bulldogs come on, here Bob back here. Doing his best Bulldog impression as always. He always turns his mic down. I wish he'd leave it up. Some people in life have the ability to do impressions. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. Oh, you're pretty good though. That. Wait, how's that again? Wasn't that a Bulldog? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You better go to the vet if it is. <laughs> I drove by that coming down here tonight, so know where they're at. <laughs> I thought that at times was where you were going to try and save on your personal health insurance. I started attending. I've done that. I went in and said, you do shots. You know, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the episode of Seinfeld. Our minutes away, and, of course, uh, again, the formalities here, the pregame atmosphere. You know, very rewarding, and, and I think at times the unfortunate thing, obviously there's seniors on both sides of the football field, Mike, for one of these teams. It's going to be the last time they have the opportunity to, to suit up, you know, uh, I read a long time ago, one of the best things that you could should do anytime you know it's about to be your last game, close your eyes for about 10, 15 seconds, take it all in, the, the noises, the sounds, the smells, because when it's over, for the biggest percentage of these guys, it's over. Well, I'll be doing that tomorrow in my college game. But yeah. I'll do that while I'm driving. I'll just close my eyes for about 15 <laughs> seconds. You do that anyways. <laughs> of course, that's right. Uh, an end of an era. Voice of Golden Eagle football, you covered – 12,000 games, it seems. Oh, a few. Mansfield out there along with uh, Magentini. Also, uh, Shrek and Gost and Shrek and Gost, both of the Shrek and Gost, Ray and uh, Brendan out there, the team captains for Red Bank Valley, Port Allegheny out there as well. As we get set, kind of blocked away from their numbers, but I do apologize. I know a lot of folks tuning in from up in the that neck of the woods of Port Allegheny. We do uh, hope you enjoy the broadcast tonight. Red Bank Valley wins the toss. <clears throat> and they'll defer. <clears throat> Bob likes that call. Yeah, I am not a big advocate. Although last week, you know, with, with Port uh, Mike, they were able to take that, that football right up the field, matriculate up the field successfully. So Red Bank will be kicking off. I just always look back, you know, from my personal experience, but also – you know, I'm somewhat of a football junkie. I watch football at all levels. And statistically speaking, there's not a ton of teams that have success. But you're also facing a playoff team, Mike, that's no stranger to, to receiving the football to start the action. These guys are predicated, again, ball control offense. They do the little things well. That's why they're here. Hey, Archer back is the deep man. Bank Valley set to kick things off. And there's the kickoff. Kick short. That's a live ball, and it's fielded by Port Allegheny over there. Oh, that's going to be at about the 35-yard line is where they're going to have it. So Port Allegheny will start off there. Ball control offense, that's what it is. And we'll see if they can make that work here tonight. Going to move that ball closer down here to about that 34, I think. All right. So throw a little start there, about the 34-yard line. Quarterback is Evans. Working out of the shotgun, takes the snap, hands that football off. That's Archer over the right side, and we'll take it up across the 35, up near the 37, maybe 38-yard line. It's a gain of 
Looks like about uh, four. Again, nothing fancy. It's a play that they've run throughout the season. Okay. So um, be very effective at that last week. Yeah, they're going to give him closer to five yards on the play. It's that ball is on near the 39-yard uh, line. Evans back to Archer over the right side. Here's Archer banging his way. Goes up across the 40 and dropped at about the 41-yard line. It's about two yards for him. And sets up a third down here and still about three here for the boy, the uh, uh, Gators of Port Allegheny. This is a big down here for Red Bank. You don't want to kind of over-pursue here. You know, you want to be aggressive, prevent that first down, but you can't sell out, perhaps risk giving up a big play. Moses in the backfield now here with Evans. He'll split uh, twin receivers on each side. Opening drive here of this uh, ball game this evening. First quarter sponsor is... Uh, Clarion Forest VNA. Archer went in motion. They hand that to Moses. Moses is going to be dropped. It'll be very close to the marker. We'll see where the official comes in. He needed about three. It looks like he might be just a bit short. Looks like it's going to be very, very close. The official's looking across there. They may measure this. Or are they going to say he got it? Looks like they're just going to give it to him. Yep, they're going to say he got it. He got the three yards. It's a first down here for the Gators. And you'll watch them now, too. They're going to take a lot of time off the clock. Moses in the backfield with Evans. Trips out to the left side. Single receivers out to the right side here for Port Allegheny. Evans takes the snap, hands out to Moses. Moses over the right side, lowers the shoulder. Takes it up across the 45-yard line, up near the 46. Gains... About two is what it looks like. Second down here in eight for the Gators. Ball at the 46-yard line. You know, I like that last look, Mike, when they have the trips on the one side. It gives you a more of a one-on-one -on -one look here on the offensive side. Gives you an opportunity to perhaps break a, a big play out of it. Evans again in the shotgun. Archer's behind him, hands up, nope, looks to throw, comes out to Moses. It's a first down, 45, 40, and out of bounds. It hit out of bounds. We're going to add 15 yards on to the end of that one. The hit at the end of the play as uh, Moses was already almost over to the track, and they're going to be set up very well here for uh, Port Allegheny. That went all the way to the 45-yard line, so that's a gain right there of about uh, 14, and then you're going to add 15 on to the end of that. Yeah, nice. Nice job that time of letting the play develop itself. Unfortunate late hit. Going to add 15 more. This is not the way the Bulldogs wanted to start out. You have to keep your composure in these situations. The ball's all the way down now to the 25-yard line. So they are just outside the... Dubrook red zone. Moses and Archer are in the backfield with Evans. They're just going to keep a steady die to those two guys. Evans in the shotgun gives it to Moses. Moses right up the gut goes, and he's going to be hit and pushed back. He'll get about a yard as he takes it down to the 24-yard line. And that's about it. Second like down here in nine. Yeah, already that's the third touch. For Moses on this drive, he's got three touches. Archer with two. The other a pass play between Evans and Moses. Twins out to the right. Styles is in the slot on the right side. We have Archer on this left side in the slot on the left side. Is they're going to go twins on each side? Evans will be in the shotgun with uh, Moses sidecar right. It is a second down here in nine. The ball resting at the 24-yard line. Archer went in motion, but a flag on the play, and this is going to go against the offense. It's a procedure penalty, and they'll back him up five. Yeah, really, that's the first bit of bad news for Port on this drive. Always joke here, this is where the optimist says that just gives the offense more real estate to work with. Second out of 15 now. Port Allegheny working now from the 30-yard line. There's be a little confusion here in the formation as Receivers have to double-check the armband, get the alignment correct. Got to make sure they have seven on the line. Trips off to the right. They're kind of bunched up on the right side. Evans looks to throw. 
Steps up. He's going to try to run. He's hit. He's dropped on the play. A five-yard loss. All the way back to the 35-yard line. And that is the downside of whenever you get a penalty, it throws you out of the rhythm a little bit. And now you're in a third and deep situation. Third and about 20. Clock down to 8.05 uh, to go here in this uh, first quarter. Cordell again, again using time, but now getting pushed backwards. Ball at the 35, Evans. Flushed out of the pocket, fires downfield. It's caught. Is he inbounds? He is. They're going to make the catch. That's Archer on this near side. He'll get back about nine of those yards. Boy, how about that? Making yeah. sure got the feet down. So fourth down, it's fourth down and about 11. And that's what you needed. You needed a chunk play to make it more manageable. Still difficult here in that fourth and 11 look. Your Bulldog defender got to keep that receiver in front of you. Don't let anybody get behind you. There's a whistle. What do we have? They come in to talk to. Not sure whether it's a clock issue or an equipment issue. I'm going to guess clock. We'll see. I ended it. It is a clock issue. 7.35, I think they say the clock should be at, so they're going to change that. There we go. It's at 7.35. Do want to thank, too, our kickoff sponsor, Universal Forest Products. Forgot to get that one in tonight. Wanted to do that. Here we go. It is a 4th and 11 for the Gators of Port Allegheny. Evans fires downside. He's got Archer. It's caught. Archer's into the end zone. Touchdown. Port Allegheny strikes pay dirt first. Archer will take that 26 yards for the touchdown. Yeah, Archer doing a nice job of not drawing attention. Mike, he got behind the coverage man as we take a closer look at this one. Gets behind that coverage man, and that's all she wrote. Port now will go for the two-point conversion. Evans is under center. Snaps it right back, and they're going to dump it into the end zone. Two-point conversion. Good. Archer dumped it into Styles, and it is 8-0 in favor of Port Allegheny. We'll take a timeout, folks. It is 8-0. Port Allegheny leading Red Bank Valley. 7.30 to go here in the first quarter, and you're watching Carly Tire High School Football and Explore Clarion at D9Sports.com. This is Corey. He made two big mistakes. His first mistake was not going to Laurel Eye Clinic to have bladeless LASIK. His second mistake was trying to pet what he thought was his cat without wearing his glasses. Don't be like Corey. Call Laurel Eye Clinic. All right, right back here to action. Port Allegheny set to uh, kick off here. They lead the 26-yard touchdown pass. Puts them up here 8-0. Yeah, nice little drive. Cromer with the kickoff. Kicks that short. That ball's alive. Red Bank able to get on top of that one. Both of them kicking the, the ball short. And Red Bank will have it at the 35-yard line. Bulldogs fortunate to come up with that one. So Bain will lead the troops on to the football field. 25 touchdown passes for him. Just four interceptions. Yeah, big key here is Mike in this drive. Number one, you got to get the first couple offensive plays and just get the feel of the game a little wee bit. Don't get too excited and hit the panic button. Shrek and Costa be in the backfield with Bain. Twins make a trips to the right single receiver off to the left side. Bain takes the snap, 
Hands that off, Shrekin Goss right up the middle. And he'll get about three yards as he takes it out near the, about the 38 yard line. Second down here in about seven. Red Bank, again, same setup, single receiver left, trips right, striking Goss in the backfield with Bain. Poor jump, but they get Boy, back in time. Yep, that is contact. close. Down to eight on the play clock. Bain takes the snap, looks to this right side. It is caught. Spinning around, and that is uh, Minnick with the catch. And he'll have the first down as he takes it across the 45 and up to the 46-yard line. And that's a gain of about eight on the play and a first down. Yeah, nice job there by combination of Bain and Tate Minnick to hook up. Minnick is a real safe, conservative route on that one. So first and ten here, and Allegheny Grill first down for the Bulldogs. They trail 8-0. Boy, look at the cushion on that left side. Baden takes the snap, hands that right back to Shrek and goes big hole up the middle, lowers the shoulder, first down as he's dropped in about the 42-yard line of Port Allegheny. That's a gain of about 12, almost 13 yards. It's a great example of running with authority. Saw the daylight, the offensive line doing an effective job opening up the holes. Red Bank Valley, another Allegheny Grill first down. Bain ready. He'll take the snap. Hands it back to Schreckengoss. Schreckengoss is going to be tripped up this time. And coming from behind to get him was uh, Young on the tackle. But uh, he'll get about two is what it's going to be. And he'll be down around the 39-yard line. Down to 5.20 to go here in the first quarter. It's a Clarion Forest VNA first quarter. Soon we'll be getting scores from that Zocker Motor scoreboard. Bain fires the football. He's got a man open, and it's incomplete. Let's see who that was over there. That dark uniform with those letters and the lights here. It's Orts. That was Orts out there. Bob had his always, – he always had those glasses too. That's what makes it nice. Oh, you know, no question about it. I'm, I'm not going to kid anybody. Without these, I'd be in big trouble. So, again, here we go. It is a third down and eight. The ball resting at the 39-yard line of Port Allegheny. Bain rolling to the left side. Fires the ball again. It is caught. And down short of the first down. That went to Minnick again. And it will be short of the first down. Yeah, but you're now in that, you know, fourth and manageable. The odds are you're going to go for it this spot in the football field. Fourth and close to three. Ball sitting at about the 33 yard line of Port Allegheny. Hard count. You got plenty of time on the down clock. 15 remaining there. Fourth down. Gives it to Shrek and Goss. Shrek and Goss, first down. Dragon tacklers with him all the way down to about the 25 yard line. Yeah, nice effort there. Keeps the legs churning. You don't think really contact was made until he was literally at that first down marker. Got about nine yards for him on that one. So Red Bank Valley, another first down, marching the ball down the field. 3.57 to go here in the first quarter. Bain looks to throw, looking to the right side, and he looks up. Marshall's down there, but it's going to be tipped away. Archer was on the defense. Good play by Archer and a good try there by uh, Minne, or by uh, excuse me, Marshall. Yeah, good look. Even though a pass like that, was not brought in, goes incomplete. It still makes the defense think a lot. It makes the defensive co coordinator really think a lot and sweat a little bit. Orts and Minnick are out to the right, single receiver out to the left here for Bain in the shotgun formation. He's got Shrek and Goss in the backfield. He's going to give it to Shrek and Goss. Shrek and Goss turns outside. There's a flag on the play. This one's going to be coming back. 
And it's unfortunate. I will tell you, he made a nice crisp block on that was Brandon Ross. Ross really opened a hole up, had the good clean block, but there will be a hole take place instead. Great crowd on hand tonight here at Red Bank Valley High School. Folks turning out in mass to check out this Bulldog team in this semifinal. I know that I'm sure it's packed over at Union High School too tonight. Would that be something next week, a Union and Red Bank uh, rematch? That's been known to happen before. Yep. Of course, Red Bank's only little 12 championship was a win over Union. Way back in 1985. So a second down here and 20. Ball back at the 35-yard line. You want to chip away here. It's great to get the big play. Got to chip away. Swing pass. It's caught. Not a lot. He gets it to Orts and actually just gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. No gain. Sets up third, now and 20. Ball sitting at the 35 of Port Allegheny. Down about 3.10 to go here in the first quarter. Got to get a little vertical on this one. Tell you what would really work right now would be a wide receiver screen, something yep. along those lines. Just with the alignment you're seeing, you're getting a soft cushion that far side, really respecting the trips of receivers with the cushion. Well, here's Bain in the shotgun. Looks across the middle of the field. It's picked off. It's intercepted. Port Allegheny comes up with a big pick in the middle of the field, and they'll take over the football. That's a dangerous throw, and that time Port able to uh, come up with the big play. Changes just like that. Red Bank was in a little bit of rhythm of their own, got the penalty, and, and from that point on, Mike unable to advance the football, turn it over with the interception, and a big break for Port here at the 238 mark. Archer and Moses will be in the backfield. Evans is the quarterback. You'll see a steady die to those guys. Going to hand that off to Archer. Here's Archer over the left side. He's going to be tripped up and dropped for a loss on the play. And he'll be dropped. Back to about the 35-yard line. That's a loss of about three. Second down here in 13. Yeah, you kind of want to write that one down because you're not going to see that very often. Archer's one of those guys. He just has a nose to get back to the line. But outstanding play defensively there for Red Bank. The one thing we have seen, Mike, going back to that last drive, you know, they're not letting the ball go down to about that five-second or less mark tonight like they did against Keystone. Yep. Evans, high snap, pulls it down, gives it to Archer, and again, not a whole lot. Over that right side. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. We're going to say Moses that time on the carry. Not a lot to work nope. with. You, you got to think here, uh, obviously a third and long, you're looking at, at pass, but boy, you also want to keep your eyes in that backfield. May be tempted to run a draw of their own here. Archer's in the slot on the left. Styles is off to the right. Those are the two go-to guys on the pass plays. Here's Moses. Goes sidecar left for Evans out of the shotgun formation. Third down 13 from their own 35. Evans looks to throw, fires the ball. He's got a man break free, and it is caught in stride. I believe that's Styles on the right side, and Styles is going to be tripped up at about the 15-yard line. Wow. Big, big play. I'll tell you what, they've connected more throwing the ball tonight than we saw against Keystone. Mike, that was actually A.J. Wiley with that reception. So Wiley comes up with the big play. That's number eight, excuse me, and eight and three look pretty close when you're up here. So Wiley gets the pass play, trips out to the left here for Port Allegheny. Moses is in the backfield. Single receivers off to the right. They have that football down at the 15-yard line. Evans looks to throw again, fires. It is caught and slipping. There was Styles that time on the catch, but he will have it at the four-yard line. It will be a first and goal as he picks up 11. So and This looks more like the up-tempo offense. Yeah, I was just going to say, a lot different than what we saw last week against uh, Keystone. 
Port Allegheny threatening to go up by the two scores. Now there's just 11 seconds to go, and I think they're going to let the clock run out very wisely. They're going to switch sides of the field, and that'll be the end of the first quarter as Port Allegheny leads it by a score of 8-0. They'll have a first and goal from the floor when we come back for quarter number two. And, folks, you're watching Carly Tire Playoff Football. It's right here on Explore Clarity and D9Sports.com. the EYT Media Network. All right, back here at Red Bank Valley High School. Port Allegheny now threatening. They have a first and goal from the four-yard line. They lead it by the score of 8 to nothing. Second quarter sponsor is Hager Paving of Strattonville. Mike, we uh, do have our first Zucker Motor scoreboard updates. Carn City 7, Central Clarion 0. And Bedford up 7-6 to six over Clearfield. Evans will line up in the shotgun. He's got both Moses and Archer in the backfield. He's in a roughly a pistol setup. And they look for them to go right to one of these guys here. The ball snapped back. He's going to give that ball to Moses as he's going to be dropped for a yard loss back to about the six-yard line. It's actually closer to almost a two-yard loss, so... They'll have it back at the – officially they're going to place it at the five. The nose of the football must be touching the five. Yeah, that's the fifth touch in the ball game for Moses with just five yards. Second down and goal from the five here for the Gator. Big gap between the center and guard on that left side. Snap it back. Evans looks to throw, dumps it into the end zone. It's caught. That's touchdown. And I think that might have been Moses in the end zone. It was. That's a touchdown for Port Allegheny. That'll cover uh, five yards. Yeah, Moses just kind of camped out, waiting for the ball to get to him, and he takes care of the business from there. So the Bulldogs are in a bit of a hole now. Yep. That one comes at the 11:22 mark here of the second quarter. Port Allegheny lines up for the two-point conversion. They're going to snap that. And the ball is intercepted. It's going back the other way, and then they're going to blow it dead. Yep. That play is dead. Unlike college or the NFL, you don't no. get the opportunity to return. I think you should. The bar line from Pat Gale, if you got a chance to score on the offensive side, the defense should also have a chance to score. But they're going to sort out the penalty here, the infraction. <clears throat> 14-0, there is a flag. And we'll see if uh, Port will get another shot here. Personal foul, face mask. Yeah, they will get another shot. So Port Allegheny will get another shot at the two-point conversion. And you saw the yellow come out right about the time the interception took place. And there wasn't a whole lot of discussion or debate about it. So Evans will work out of the shotgun again. They'll get another shot at the two-point conversion. Ball snap back to Evans. Swings it out to Archer. Archer's going to be stopped shy of the goal line, so that's where it'll be. It'll still be 14-0 in favor of Port Allegheny. 11.22 to go here in this uh, first half. We'll take a very quick timeout. You're watching Carly Tire High School Football here on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Oaks Building Supply is dedicated to providing quality building products to the community. You will always find what you need for your home improvement project and get great advice on how to do the job at Oaks Building Supply. Customer satisfaction is a top priority. Oaks Building Supply, 
for all your building and lumber supply needs. <coughs> Located on Route 66 in Lucinda. You're locked on to the EYT Media Network. Here we go back to action as uh, Port Allegheny adds to that lead. They lead 14-0. They're up by the two scores now on Red Bank Valley. The Bulldogs will get a chance now to return uh, the kick here. What you'd really like to do is get some decent field position here. You know, the last time the ball was kicked short, it did cover it. Here's Button. Going to send it down the field short, too. It's going to be picked up. And right up the gut it goes. Spinning around. And up near uh, midfield and then down to about the 46-yard line of Port Allegheny. Oh, That's let's see. Coming Brandon up Ross, one. I believe. Yep. Yep, number 26. It is Brandon Ross. Ross with a nice job. In that, and that's what Red Bank needed, a big special teams play and a big break. Got the football in outstanding field position. The big key is can they take advantage of it? Trips off to the right, single receiver to the left side here for the Bulldogs. They're at the 46-yard line of Port Allegheny. The handoff goes to Shrek and Goss, and Shrek and Goss is going to be tripped up and dropped. He'll get about a yard as he leans forward. Second down here in nine. That's the fifth touch in the ball game out of Shrek and Goss. Red Bank looks like they're going to try and go a little bit of an up-tempo here, speed the tempo of the ball game up a little bit. Same setup, trips right, single receiver on the left side. You can see that from your screen. Shrek and Goss in the backfield, swing pass. It is caught, drop, loss on the play. That'll be a loss of about three, almost four it's yards. It's going to be a loss of a lot more, I think, based on the yellow flag that came in. Ah. I think we may have a hold on top of this. but Now, do you take uh -huh. that? Or do you take the hold and back them up to 10? I back them up. Or do you take the down? That's the question. It's a I, loss of about three. I back them up knowing the fact, again, that it's a team that likes to throw the football, and they're going to say no, no hold. So. <clears throat> so it will be a third down, loss of about uh, three yards back near midfield at the 48-yard line. It is a third down here in about uh, 12, almost 13. Bain takes the snap, looks to throw, pocket collapses. Bain steps up. Bain hit, drop, he'll be dropped right there after about maybe a yard is what they might give him. And that's all. It's a fourth down and 12, and the punt team comes on here for Red Bank Valley. Minnick will go back to punt. Archer is the deep man. So Minnick ready to punt. They're going to try to pin him deep here. Good punt. Angles it away from Archer. It's going to bounce. Nice punt. It goes inside the 10, continues to roll to about the 7-yard line, and that's where it'll be. Flag on the play. And they're talking about Archer season tomorrow. Not a good situation to be in. The officials will not tolerate that. And it's going to go against Port Allegheny. I believe the one player put I his hands be, up. I don't know if I would be shocked if I'd see it offsetting, but again, we'll let the officials sort that one out. Obviously, we were watching the action down the field. Only saw the tail end of the discussion. And again, that's one of the things these officials will not tolerate. Well, here we go. We'll get the call from the official. There's making sure. Red Bank fans are getting a little testy here. <laughs> well, they're not in used to being in this situation. Yeah, Mike, I'll they trail 14 to nothing yeah. here. And just have, have not found that rhythm. The only other uh, scores we have so far on that Zocker Motor scoreboard. One goes against Red Bank. Personal foul. One goes against Port Allegheny. That's the old classic offsetting, and it'll be Port Allegheny football first and 10. The only thing you got to remember, if you're the guy who committed that foul, rest of the game, you better be on your best behavior because it's a short leash. At Zucker Motor scoreboard, it is Carn City 7, Central Clarion 0. 
Bedford seven and Clearfield six. I think you may want to take a chance here defensively and try and uh, gamble a little wee bit here with Port Pin back in their own territory. Try and force maybe a turnover or an ill-advised play. Officials will still go over and they'll talk with the coaches on Port Allegheny. Make well, sure everybody's on the same page. Tell them, too, the numbers of the guys yep. that were involved because yep. that once you get one, you get two, you're out. So, Bob, you had four in one game, and they couldn't figure out. You kept changing jerseys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back then, if I tried something like that, I'd have had a seat beside uh, Coach Shoemaker. He'd have probably uh, never let me forget it either. Evans will work out of the shotgun. From the seven-yard line here for Port Allegheny, he's going to hand that football off. Archer gets hit and dropped on the play, spins around, stays up somehow, flag on the play. Because the offensive player was assisting his teammate. In the NFL, he can do that now, but he don't care for that much this level. Either way, they'll sort this out. and uh, there It's just going to be, it looks like a sideline warning almost, the way they're motioning here. Oh, it's, it is a system, like I yep. said. First, I didn't think they were going to call that one. But so you take the down or oh, do you I, back I take the up? down because you're only going to net two and a half yards maybe. Yep, they're going to so decline it, which yeah. is smart. Yep, smart play. But it's not a bad idea, and again, you know, it's acceptable in the NFL. And he just still didn't allow that here. About a yard loss on the play back to the six-yard line. Where's Mike Kalinowski, one of the biggest NFL fans there is? Fans of not liking it, yeah. <laughs> Nine and a half to go here in the second quarter. Port Allegheny leads 14-0. In went in motion. Evans. Stepping up, he's hit. Evans is going to be dropped. And he'll be dropped for a loss back to about the two-yard line. That's a loss of nearly four on the play. Yeah, and very fortunate. He knew, had a nose for that goal line. Knew he had to keep that football out of there. As he landed, the football itself was out, so there was no danger of the safety. But it's a good presence of mind. But Bulldogs got to dial up a big play here. Ball is at the two. It's a third down and long now for Port Allegheny. Third and long brought to you by Luton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Here's Evans out of the shotgun. Dogs the first tipping off a potential blitz, and they back off. Ball snapped to Evans, hands that football off. Not a lot there. He stood up. Hey. Hey, no game. Blow the whistle, probably actually lost about a yard. Yep, ball's very close to the one now. So, yep, it's a loss of one. So, fourth down, and Port will have to be punting out of their end zone. 14-0, the Gators lead with eight minutes to go here in the second. But now this is dangerous. This is where you tell the guys rushing this kick. Unless you're 1,000% certain, don't try and go for the block. We're going to get great field position on this return. Button to punt. Gets it away. Low. It's going to bounce. Rolls. Picked up. That's Minnick. Minnick to the 25-20. Down to the 15-yard line. And Red Bank will have it in great field position at about the 14-yard line of Port Allegheny. That's a big play out of your special teams. A shot in the arm the Bulldogs really need right now. No need to hit the panic button. It is two scores. You still got 736 on the clock here. Quarter number two. Great to have you with us on a crisp Friday night. <laughs> Minnick and Marshall go wide out to the right. Twins off to the left side. Orts is in the slot over here. And off though goes to Strecken. Goss Strecken. Goss bagging his way up the middle. And he'll drag tacklers down near the six yard line. So a nice gain there. Um, about eight on the play sets up a second down here, and about two is what it looks like. 
to give him 34 yards on six touches tonight. Ball at the six. Clock down right, to seven. I can get right back to him. Give him a heavy dose. Goes right to Shrekin. Goss here. Shrekin got side. Steps a tackler into the end zone for the Red Bank Valley touchdown. Comes at the 651 mark here of this second quarter. You ever hear the phrase, that's what the doctor ordered? Well, that'll be it. So he punches it in. Six yards for him on the run. Dogs will go for the two-point conversion here. Mag uh, Magentini is in. Magentini rolls to the right side. Magentini hit from behind, throws, it's caught, two-point conversion, good. He was being drugged to the ground, and he gets the two-point conversion. Here's a replay on it over here. Boy, I'll tell you what, he was being drugged down. And then found the end zone. He catches up there with Kale for the score. So 14-8 is where we stand. We'll keep it right here. Second quarter sponsor again is uh, Hager Paving of Strattonville. Want to thank them, but also Heater Lumber, a great sponsor, Red Bank Valley Sports here on the EYT Media Network. Well, that got the Red Bank uh, crowd fired up here. Yeah, big shot in the arm really got all underway, Mike, uh, with the good special teams play, the initial punt, and the defense staying in the ground, and then the great return. And that's the shot in the arm the Bulldogs really needed. You can just see the confidence levels back. It was very quiet on that sideline prior to that. They didn't hit the panic button or anything, but they were certainly well aware that they were trailing 14 to nothing. Downs to kick things off. Sends it short. Again, one of the up men take it and falls to the ground. He was bumped into one of his own players. Uh, that uh, was number uh, A.J. Wiley. Yeah, I think actually, too, with that bump, he, he realized, hey, let's just take a knee. Yep. It's good field position. Don't risk the turnover. So the ball be taken at about the 35-yard line. That'll be a first and, uh, first and 10 here for Port Allegheny. 14-8, 6.49 to go here in this uh, quarter. Red Bank will get the football to start the second half as well. They had won the toss and decided to defer. Evans will be in the shotgun formation. Hands the football off. That's Moses over the left side. Flag comes in, and then we'll see this one come back. And yeah, not a whole lot of real estate to work with there. The officials get the indication for the hold. I don't think there was any doubt about that infraction. They march it off. Sets up a first and 20 here for Port Allegheny. Six forty-three. It has been a fun one so far here. Fourteen to eight. Port has led throughout. Pushes the ball back to the twenty-five yard line. First and twenty here for the Gators. I'll tell you what, the Gators came out on fire, and Red Bank able to get that short field and get the score. Evans in the shotgun formation. Twins on each side for the quarterback. Ball's going to be snapped back, and not a lot there. Maybe a yard is all. And was Actually going to snap that direct to Archer. Yeah, they went right to Archer that time, running that kind of wildcat offense. Yeah, not a, not a bad idea. <clears throat> Second down, 19. It's just a yard pickup. Five fifty-five to go here in this uh, first half. Clock continues to roll here. Ball snap back again, right to Archer. He slips, but goes over the left side, and Archer will pick up maybe about two more. Okay. 
And it's a third down and still about uh, 18 here. So a third down and long for Port Allegheny. Moses will be in the backfield. This is where you're just going to play smart football here. Not going to do any page 38 play. Evans will work out of the shotgun. Twins on each side. Takes the snap. Looks to throw. Pocket collapses. Red bank all over at that time. And he'll be dropped for a big loss. All coming up. Brandon Schreckengoss back there as well as Ray Schreckengoss both involved in that tackle. A big ball. tackle for loss. Push back to about the 17-yard line. That's a loss of about 10. And the punt coming up. Braylon Button to punt. There's the punt, angles it away. Very short punt. And it will be taken by Klaus. And he'll be dropped in excellent field position again for Red Bank Valley. They'll be inside the 25-yard line. They're going to say right down near the 20. So they're right there at the Dubrook red zone to start this possession. 4.15 to go here in the second, Robert. And it's 14-8. And Red Bank's already threatening. They are. And again, special teams coming up. Mike with another big play. The defense rose to the occasion. Special teams, Bulldogs now outstanding position. Got to take advantage of this. Got to get a score. Ball sits at the 20-yard line. First and 10 here for the Bulldogs. Schreckengoss is in the backfield with Bain. He's going to send Orts in motion. He's going to pitch it to Orts. Over the right side, Orts turns the corner. Takes it down inside the 10 and down to the 9-yard line. It'll be a first and goal here for Red Bank Valley on the pickup of 11. Yeah, nice change of direction. First time Orts touches the ball. With a run, that is. Had the reception earlier. But with a run, he picks up 11. And now first and goal situation. Bain in the shotgun. 3.43 to go here in the quarter. Here's the handoff to Schreckengoss. Schreckengoss banging his way up the middle. And uh, not a whole lot that time. He might get one to the eight. So a second and goal. Port stout on that play. Yeah, the line has had pretty good penetration. Uh, the offensive line is for Red Bank tonight, Mike. It's really paying big dividends here. That time, one of the few times that Orts didn't get chunky yardage. Here's Orts. Dump it off to him in the slide, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Eight yards on the pass play. Bain to Orts. Red Bank ties it, and now they look to take the lead. What a big play, and here's an even bigger one as it looks like they're going to attempt a point after. Is that Downs? It is. Kick by Downs. It's up, and the extra point is good, and Red Bank leads it by a score of 15 to 14. How about that? Red Bank coming up with but the big is, play. There is a flag. And we may be doing this one again. We'll see. And some of the Bulldogs indicating it looks like it's against sport. We've had no official signal. And they're going to take the extra point. So Red Bank Valley <clears throat> leading here 15 to 14. Penalty going against uh, Port Allegheny. And they'll probably assess the personal foul on the kickoff. Again, we'll just hold right here. 3.05 to go here in the first half. Red Bank Valley leading 15-14. What a game here at Red Bank Valley. 
the Bulldogs responding nice against big special teams play. The defense rising to the occasion. They're in command right now. Downs will set to kick off. Archer will be the deep man, but uh, they'll probably kick it short. That's what we've seen for the most part. You're going to have to, of course, march off the penalty. He'll be kicking off from the 45-yard line. And another opportunity, depending on what you want to do here, you can really pin them deep. Now, it appears that Port's going to play short, looking for another one of those short kickoffs. But I'd be tempted, Mike, to try and pooch it in one of the corners, respectively. Got a lot of real estate that they're going to have to try and cover. Of course, we all know it's a live ball. Official making sure everybody knows what's going on. So here we go. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed you didn't bring the heater tonight. I told you to bring your buddy heater. I think it's going to have to be a requirement pretty much from here on out. Take off. Comes down inside, uh, picked up around the 10. That's Archer. Oh, Archer out the outside, up to the 45 and out of bounds. Boy, is he fast. It's like watching our own Bison Oaks warm up prior to the start of a broadcast. Yep. Once he gets the heat into those uh, pants, he's, he's gone. Yeah, no question about it. Never realized the Bison could move that fast. Well, three of them didn't. That's how he got those. <laughs> ah, Yes. <clears throat> So the Gators will have it at the 45-yard line, their own 45, set up well here with 2.58 to go here in the first half. So Archer picking up that ball and uh, making some things happen. Trips to the right, single receiver to the left. We have Archer over here along with Styles. Evans in the shotgun with Moses in the backfield. He'll take the snap, looks to throw, swings it out to the left side. It is caught. And looks like close to first down yardage. He's looking to see who gets up with this one on that far side. Bob, I know you have the glasses out there. Was that uh, Wiley? No, actually, it's got to be Caleb Smoker. Okay. First we call to him. Number 18, Caleb Smoker with the uh, catch. They're going to say got out of bounds, too. Stops the clock at 2.50. Now, we've got a correction on that. That's actually Peyton Spencer, excuse me, on that one. Peyton Spencer's jersey was so kind of rolled up a little bit. All right, 15 instead of 18. We'll get it right. Evans swings it out. Caught. And that is a Styles with it, making some moves, and getting a couple yards. Gets down inside the 45, down near the... 42-yard line. It's about a three-yard pickup. Clock rolling now. Two and a half to go here in the first half. Second down here and short eight, long seven, however you want to look at it, as the ball nearing the 42-yard line. And, you know, you still got to be careful here. Again, you've got plenty of real estate to work with, but you want to be careful. Don't be surprised if Red Bank doesn't dial up a blitz soon. Evans looks to throw again. He's got a man open. And it is incomplete. Put it on the hands of A.J. Wiley on the right side. Well, he pulls that in. He may be looking for pay dirt. I don't think there's any question about a partner. I think he's going to be going into the end zone. He's got a pretty good set of wheels on him that time. Just did a great move, a little stop and go move. Got the defender to bite hard on it. They're down still about eight. Well, just shy of the 42-yard line of Red Bank Valley. Right side, Styles is out there along with uh, Wiley. Twins off to the left side as well. Evans looking to throw again. Looks down the right sideline, and this time it is knocked away at the very end. He was looking again for Wiley. And good defense that time by Red Bank Valley, four down. Yeah, beautiful defense that time. Time Mike is Mason Klaus in great position. It looked momentarily like the receiver's going to get by him. It's a good recovery. Oh boy, this is a surprise here on a fourth down. I, yeah, I try and pooch that ball a little deeper in case you turn it over. And Evans. I think we're going to see maybe a timeout here. 
And I think this is a case here where Port's sort of rethinking this strategy a little bit potentially as they take the timeout. I think that's that's a good good timeout to do. You know, the, again, the, you know, sometimes you think, well, okay, look where we're at in the field. Let's go for it. But you know, right now it is a fourth and pretty much a, a short eight, very long seven, short eight scenario. Um, I just I think you know you you've obviously been in a situation. Red Bank's got some momentum going for them. I don't necessarily think. Yeah, you had a couple. Of, less than desirable experiences results as a result of the punch you just had. But look, that was deep in your own territory. Here you've got some real estate to work with. And as we're trying to get that Zarco Motors scoreboard update and take a closer look at it here. It is Ridgeway 3, Brookville 0. Carn City up 21 to nothing over Central Clarion. Union AC Valley 7 to nothing against Smithport. And Bedford up 27 to 6 over Clearfield. Good ball games going on tonight. Good one here, 15-14. Red Bank leads Port Allegheny. The and Gators they, now will punt. Yeah, they do rethink that strategy a little bit. Button to punt. High snap, pulls it down, almost gets it blocked, angles it to the right side, and it goes off of a Port player down and around the about the 20-yard line, I believe. That's uh, so a Red Bank will have it at the 20, and they'll have a minute 57 to work with. Bulldog still with three timeouts. Because obviously now you've made Red Bank have to drive that much further by doing this. Red Bank really, Mike, you know, they've been limited in their passing yardage tonight, just 18 yards total out of Bain on eight attempts. Well, here we go. The Bulldogs break the huddle, come to the line of scrimmage, working from their own 20. They lead by the point, 15-14. Bain sends Orts in motion, pitches to Orts. That ball's loose, and Red Bank falls on top of it. It's an incomplete pass. All right, that they're going to say pass. incomplete. Yep, just that little simple yep. push pass. And that's the beauty of it. Now, it's a nice heads-up play in case, in case the official didn't realize, you know, what Absolutely. was going on. Because you can't ever assume and take, take for granted, but... He's right on top of it. Gets the indication clearly. So second down and 10 from the 20-yard line here for the Bulldogs. Yeah, a that's, minute 54. That's one of those rust plays that I talked about earlier. You know, the week off, not quite as crisp as what you've been throughout the season. Bain drops back, looks to throw, pumps, hit, fires across the middle, caught, first down. And he's going to uh, get that into Klaus for the first down. And that's a gain of about 13 on the play as they move it out to the 33-yard line. Clock rolling, a minute 40 to go here in the quarter. We'll have the Carrier Insurance halftime show coming up. Orts goes in motion. They'll pitch it again to Orts this time. Orts over the right side. Here's Orts. Orts dumping over tacklers, and he'll take that ball for about 12 for a first down out to the 45-yard line. Uh, clock becoming a factor, 123, got to pick the tempo up. And usually they'll stop that clock till the chain gang gets in place. Yeah, the official not indicating. <clears throat> ball to 45, Bain dancing around, steps up, fires the ball, caught again. Klaus lost the football, but they're going to say he's down. That's a first down, that's a gain. Oh, now they're going to call the incomplete pass. They're going to say he was not able to complete that, so the incomplete pass. Boy, that was close. <laughs> Stops the clock at a minute four. I think you saw a little bit of joking on the sideline say, hey, we want to challenge that <laughs> that fake flag throw. And, of course, the official not necessarily completely finding the humor in it, but <laughs> didn't get too excited about it. Second down and 10 from the 45 here for Red Bank Valley. Swing pass by Bain out to Minnick. Minnick makes the catch. Minnick turns it up to midfield. Minnick, 45 down near the 40-yard line of Port Allegheny. And that's a first down. That's a gain of 15. And Red Bank will use the time on here with 56 seconds. The Bulldogs will take the break. And uh, I'll tell you what, if you want to uh, check those scores too, you can always do that at d9sports.com. We'll have more coming up here. Got the Carrier Insurance Halftime Show on the way. It's been a good one. 15-14 Red Bank Valley leads, but they're driving. A nice little drive here, but clock 
Not on their side, just 56 ticks remaining. Glancing at the Zocker Motor scoreboard again. It's Bedford 27, Clearfield 6, Carn City 21, Central Clarion 0, Ridgeway 3, Brookville 0. <clears throat> Union AC Valley up 7 to nothing over Smithport. You say three or trace. What do you prefer? I, I'm a three man. All right. Just wonder. I'm, I'm one dimensional. How's that sound? Well, here we go. The Bulldogs break uh, from the timeout. They still have a couple up on the board. 56 seconds to go here in the first half. They lead by one. Bulldogs will get the ball to start the second half as well, but they're driving here trying to get this one. They're at the 41 yard line of Port. Bain. Dances around across the middle, and it's off the hands of Orts down around the 30-yard line. You know, they found a seam, Mike, that is in that 10 to 13-yard range in the coverage, and, and it's something that uh, Bulldogs are, are trying to take advantage of, have had some success with it, really needed that catch right there. But now you might want to look, start and think about going a little bit more vertical as just 51 ticks remain. Second down and 10 from the 41 of Port Allegheny. Bain swing pass, caught. That's Minnick. And Minnick's drop for a short gain on the play. He's only going to gain about one, maybe two, as it's down at the 39-yard line. Going to have to hurry to get this one off. Yeah, 36 seconds. So they will use a timeout here. They had two. That stops the clock with 31. And the Bulldogs will take a timeout. They still have one, 31 seconds. Uh, third down in about eight. <clears throat> yeah, really didn't want to use it there, but I think I actually had an injury as well. And there's certainly player safety first and foremost on a coach's minds. Also, this is a, an opportunity again. Anytime you have an opportunity to score, you want to take full advantage of it. So that ball going to be right at that, just inside that 40-yard line. A port with 31 ticks on the clock, which is one timeout to work with. Well, gonna be, Tyler's going to be sugared up when he there, goes home. His wife's going to be like, what's wrong? He's eating cookies, There's got to be a candy shortage throughout Clarion County because <laughs> I guarantee Bison Oaks has got a big chunk of it. You didn't realize that a bison liked that much sugar, did you? Well, I'll tell you what. He can put her away. <laughs> He may have and that's to, all right. He may have to buy a new pair of bison pants. <laughs> They'll need four. Yeah, they don't stretch very well. <laughs> 31 seconds. Here comes Red Bank now. They lead by one. They have the football at the 39-yard line of Port Allegheny. Bain works out of the shotgun on third down. Draws back, looks to throw. Hit as he released the football. It's caught across the middle first down. And that was, uh, I believe, Smith. Making the catch, or excuse me, Kale making the catch. Thinking about Smith, but that is a Kale. And they're just going to slam it to stop the clock. They have the football down around the 16-yard line. So 16 seconds. They still have a timeout. It's a smart move to go ahead and save, save the timeout. Got an opportunity here. Probably two no more than three plays. Ball's at about the 17-yard line. Bain looks to the left side for the end zone. He's got a man, and it's knocked away. Good defensive uh, play that time by Chase uh, Weimer to knock that one down for Port Allegheny. Yeah, now is, is when it's nice. You find those creases, Mike, because you can run that, that type of pattern necessitating either the gain of, you know, 13, 12, 13 yards. But 12 ticks remain on the clock now. It's the third down. Now from the 17-yard line. Bain looks to the left side, steps up, flushed out of the pocket. He's hit. He's going to be sacked. He'll be sacked at the 15. He'll get about two yards out of it. Red Bank's going to use a timeout. It'll be fourth down for the Bulldogs. You had to take the timeout, otherwise all the time would have ticked off the clock. So not quite what you wanted to see. We may see a long, I'm not so sure whether you're going to see a long field goal attempt here or not. 
And, and they, they're just going to go with offense. They yeah, just it'd be a decide. 32 yard attempt. Yeah, because it's from the 15 to be about uh, 32 yards. So we'll see Red Bank come on here. Been a heck of a first half so far. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad time to go to about page 12 in the playbook. You know, something maybe you haven't shown in a while, but you've run effectively in practice. Because let's face it, you're out of timeouts now, so either you've got to get in the end zone or a real quick. You know, because you're not going to get up. Obviously, it's being fourth down anyways. So you either got to get a first down. You're not going to have the opportunity to spike it. So you got to be looking end zone the whole way on this one. Trips to the left, twins to the right. Here's Bain, drops back, looks to throw, fires a football across the middle of the end zone. It falls incomplete, no good. And Port Allegheny will take over with one second on the clock. 15-14, looks like where we're going to end this first half, but Port still has one play here. Do you the Bob Dunkel or the Pat Kale call here? It's a Bob Dunkel call all day. <laughs> you know, you just traveled on the road. You trail by one, so it's a one-play ball game. You're deep in your own territory. You just dodged the bullet on a fourth down play to the end zone. Take a knee, go to the locker room, regroup, and take care of business. Well, there we go. 15-14 as we end the first half. Carrier Insurance Halftime Show is coming up here, and uh, we'll have that for you. And again, the score, a one-point advantage for Red Bank Valley here at halftime. And you are watching Carly Tire High School football. And folks, it's live right here on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Clarion Forest VNA believes the emotional and physical well-being of a patient is enhanced by the patient receiving care in the familiar surroundings of home. Their staff of caring professionals work closely with physicians to administer quality care to meet the needs of each individual. As a pioneer in home health care in Clarion and Forest County, Clarion Forest VNA continue to grow to meet the community's need for in-home care, offering many different services and programs to meet the patient's need. Clarion Forest VNA, located at 271 Perkins. Road in Clarion. Call us toll free at 1 800 262 2118. making it safer to save today. As we all adjust to the new normal, shopping for furniture is a little different. That's why our team wears masks and goes the extra mile while delivering in your home. It's why our website is so informative, enabling you to buy online or by phone. That's why we limit shoppers and offer special hours for our at-risk neighbors, first responders, and healthcare professionals. Your waiting is over. Let us help you save safely today. Our community needs its local businesses. Let's put unity back into the community. Let's all unite to support local business. Butler Health System, proudly standing with our local businesses. Your choice matters. When the time comes, choose local. Let's all unite to support them and the other local businesses in your community. It's important because when local businesses thrive, communities thrive. Dubrook, a proud member of the M&B Group, is the right choice for your next concrete project. Specializing in decorative concrete products, precast concrete products, gravel and stone delivery, Dubrook has what you need to complete your residential or commercial project. With locations in Clarion, Dubois, St. Mary's, Butler, and Evans City, Dubrook is ready to offer their professional help as your ready-mix supplier. Call 1-844-DUBROOK-TODAY. 
You're locked on to the EYT Media Network. And in the background, we have the band from Fort Allegheny bringing us back here. That's one of your favorites, too, there. Before you come on by. Oh, Santana. yeah. Band doing a nice job down there. Let's give them a quick listen. There you go. That's the uh, Port Allegheny Marching Band, the Gator Marching Band there in the background. A little Oye Como Va from Santana. And that uh, brings us into the Car Carrier Insurance Halftime Show. And uh, time to take a look at those stats. The stats brought to you by the Laurel Eye Clinic. Well, Mike, uh, a little different than last week. I really felt coming into this ballgame we'd see Port Allegheny stick with that ground attack and went away from it. They did lead uh, in this ballgame for quite a while, up by 14 points, but... What a difference quarter number two has made for Red Bank. But as we look at the stats, Port Allegheny minus 10 rushing, and that's due in large part a lot of uh, a couple of sacks there against quarterback Evans. But Evans minus 19, Blaine Moses checking with four yards and then five yards out of no Archer. Now, Archer and Moses each rushing the ball six times, and Evans, of course, with that minus 19, three different attempts. Through the air, eight of 10, uh, Evans is making this money there, so to speak, because he's eight of 10. For 122 yards in this one, does have two touchdowns to go along with those numbers as well. Archer checking in, two receptions, 35 yards, 14 yards out of Styles Wiley with a 42-yard reception. Peyton Spencer, 12-yarder, and Blaine Moses, two receptions for 19 yards and one touchdown to go along with it. Again, 112 yards of total offense for Port Allegheny here at the half. Well, Red Bank Valley. Uh, 139 yards in this one. On the ground, Ray Schreckengoss, 41 yards, one touchdown to go with that. 30, or excuse me, three yards out of Bryce and Bain on a couple of different attempts. And checking in is Aiden Wirtz with that 11-yard run. Bryce and Bain is 10 of 18 with one interception, does have one touchdown to go along with that. Hauling in receptions tonight would be Orts with that eight-yard Touchdown, 27 yards worth of uh, receiving out of Tate Minnick on five receptions. Mason Klaus, 25 yards and 24 yards out of Ashton Kale. Again, uh, Bulldogs at 139 yards of offense here in the first half of play. Again, those stats are brought to you by the Laurel Eye Clinic. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll have our scoring summary from the first half, and we'll look at the scoreboard as well, and we'll have the keys all coming up with the governor. And at halftime, it is 15-14. Red Bank Valley leads Port Allegheny. And you are watching Carly Tire State Playoff Football, District 9 Playoff Football, and it's all right here on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Locally owned and operated, Hager Paving of Strattonville provides a range of services. Hot mix asphalt, cold patch asphalt, tar and chipping, and seal coating. Hager Paving's reputation in business is based on customer service, referrals, and your satisfaction. Serving residential, commercial, industrial, and local municipalities throughout western Pennsylvania. Exceptional service, exceptional quality. That's Hager Paving of Strattonville. Call 814-764-5080. That's 814-764-5080 for Hager Paving. 
of the biggest risks to your future could be running out of money during a longer than expected retirement. Many people have not yet taken the time to determine if they will have enough assets to last throughout retirement. Our Retirement Income Evaluator can help you develop a roadmap and actual recommendations. To learn more, stop by our office located at 162 South 2nd Avenue in Clarion. Give us a call at 2223-9990 or visit JennyClarion.com. Jenny Montgomery Scott, LLC, member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. No matter how cold it is outside, you can keep warm and toasty inside with a built-in-the-USA super-efficient furnace from Luton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Affordable, quiet, and reliable, you can count on your furnace from Luton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. With so much to protect each day, Eric Schick Insurance and Financial Services is here to help you find the right coverage that fits your life. Call 814-275-2210 to learn more. Throughout West Central Pennsylvania, people are losing their glasses. Well, they haven't really lost them. They just don't need them anymore. Thanks to the amazing LASIK surgeons at Laurel Eye Clinic. Call Laurel Eye Clinic and schedule your free consultation. We're locked on to the EYT Media Network. And in the background here on the Carry Insurance Halftime Show, we got the Red Bank Valley Bulldog Marks Band. Let's give a listen to Red Bank Valley. That's the Red Bank Valley Marching Band back there performing here at halftime. And we'll continue to have them here as we roll through the halftime show. Scoring summary from the first half uh, back in the first quarter at the 7.30 mark. It was uh, Evans with the uh, pass to Archer, 126 yards. The two-point uh, conversion was good, went to Styles. It was 8-0. Uh, Port Allegheny at the 7.30 mark in quarter number one. Go to quarter number two, Port Allegheny would jump up by the two scores. It was Moses taking the pass from Evans five yards for the touchdown. Two-point conversion was no good. It was 14-0 at that point. And then at the 6.51 mark, Schreckengoss for Red Bank Valley would get them on the board. A six-yard touchdown run. Two-point uh, try went to Kale. It was good. It was 14-8. And then with 3.05 to go in the second quarter, Orts took the pass from Bain about eight yards for the touchdown. Downs came on for the extra point. And that gave Red Bank the lead here by a score of 15 to 14. Again, scoring summary is brought to you by Gatesman's Auto Body. Governor, what you got over there on the uh, Zocra Motor scoreboard? Now, big one here. Carnes City pulling away. They are up 28 to nothing over Central Clarion at halftime. It is Ridgeway 3, Brookville 0, Union AC Valley 7, Smithport 0, and Bedford 27, Clearfield 12. That at the half. All right, again, the uh, scoreboard brought to you by Zocra Motors. We'll give a listen here to the Red Bank Band. They'll take us out uh, to our next break, and the Governor's Keys are coming up here momentarily. There's that Red Bank Band performing here tonight. A big crowd at Red Bank Valley's football field.
Red Bank Chevrolet, the area's number one Chevrolet dealer and Clarion County's truck headquarters. So if you're in the market for a new or used Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV, go to Red Bank Chevrolet, 500 Broad Street in New Bethlehem, or online redbankchevrolet.com. Skilled staff at Red Bank Chevrolet is ready to meet all of your automotive needs. If we don't see you today, we'll see you at Red Bank Chevrolet. J&J Trailers and Equipment Sales on Route 66 in Shippenville is your one-stop trailer shop for all things trailers. J&J stocks over 70 trailers at a time of all shapes and sizes, including enclosed cargoes, equipment haulers, utility trailers, tilt trailers, and dump trailers. Reputable brands include CarMate, Sport Haven, PJ, Liberty, and Wells Cargo. If you are looking for the most dependable trailers on the market, backed by the industry's best warranty, choose J&J Trailers and Equipment Sales. Trailers that work for a living. Located in Parker, Emlinton, and Clarion, UFP Parker LLC is currently hiring for several skill levels, including general labor, assembler, and forklift operators. For more information, visit ufpi.com forward slash careers. Dubrook, a proud member of the M&B Group, is the right choice for your next concrete project. Specializing in decorative concrete products, precast concrete products, gravel and stone delivery, Dubrook has what you need to complete your residential or commercial project. With locations in Clarion, Dubois, St. Mary's, Butler, and Evans City, Dubrook is ready to offer their professional help as your ready-mix supplier. Call 1-844-DUBROOK today. You're locked on to the EYT Media Network. There you go in the background. Uh, finishing up there was the Red Bank Valley Marching Band doing a fantastic job here at halftime. Teams are coming back on the football field to get a couple minutes to get their uh, additional warm-ups, and it is time to take a look at the keys to the second half. They're brought to you by Kale's Kitchens. And, Bob, what do you think? Uh, it's a close one, 15-14. What does each team need to do? Any big changes from that first half? I don't think you're going to see wholesale changes. I am. I got to be honest with you. I'm surprised we don't see Port go back more to that running attack. We know they had a lot of success against Keystone last week, and I would think that they're going to dial something up, be a little more focused on that. Obviously, um, you know they did have some nice yardage throwing the football. Did finish uh, 122 yards here in the first half, and again a negative yardage rushing. I think that to me is the biggest surprise. Um, I think last week, you know, we saw that ball game, Mike, where they would wait and let you know the play clock run down to about five seconds or so before snapping the football. Now, got away from that. They had success in this one. They jumped on top 14 nothing. But then Red Bank's offense, defense started both make some plays. Special teams took over. So, I think they have to get back to that running game a little wee bit, Mike. I think if anything, the run will also help set up the pass. I say that constantly, but those two work hand in hand. And I think also. Your special teams have got to get you out of and switch field positions if you are forced to punt. You know, you have to have a little success from your offense, but your special teams have got to get the football down the field any time that uh, they're going to send a kick down that way. Now, obviously, for Red Bank Valley, they're up here 15-14. They're going to approach this, I'm sure, as if they're losing, you know, rather than winning. You know, they're going to be aggressive. I think they realize that, look, it's a one-play ball game. Anything can happen. I, I think uh, you're seeing a little bit of rust on them, you know, from that week off, Mike. It, it, they didn't start really to get into much of a rhythm until the second quarter of play. Started to mix up a little bit. They have found some positive things passing-wise. They, they're they hitting that crease about 13 yards off the field. It's a little bit of a crease in that zone. I think they're going to try and exploit that in the second half as well. But, boy, I still would go back. You've got a rhythm running that football with Ray Schreckengoss. Feed him a little bit. He's got eight touches, 41 yards in this one, one touchdown. Feed him. He's had a strong night. Feed him until they stop it. If anything, that's going to open up things again for that passing game. Again, the governor's keys to the second half are brought to you by Kale's Kitchens, and we're just moments away from the start of the second half here. Our third quarter sponsor will be Zocro Motors, and we do want to thank Carrier Insurance for their sponsorship of the halftime show. 
course, our other broadcast tonight, Dustin Kiefer and Larry Weiser are over at uh, Union High School <clears throat> as Union is taking on Smithport over there. And you can always uh, check that out, too, as uh, if you're waiting here. I know <clears throat> kind of interesting, Dustin and Larry. That's a <laughs> that's an interesting combination. Well, you know what? Uh, and, of course, anybody who knows Coach Wise or realizes, you know, there's a guy. He's got a wealth of football knowledge. He's an entertaining guy as well. He's, he's got a number of different lines. Certainly he can always uh, offer you some keen insight. I'd love to pick his brain. We've had the opportunity to talk many times, of course, as he was a – Head coach Mike covered, I don't know, 12,000 of his football games <laughs> in my broadcast career. At least. <clears throat> so, get set to go here in this second half. Red Bank Valley will get the football to start things. The Bulldogs lead by the score of 15 to 14. And uh, kicking off will be uh, Braylon Button for Port Allegheny. They've, everyone's been kicking short, so we'll see if that continues. <clears throat> yeah, you saw what happened actually on the, as a result of a penalty anyways. Red Bank had the opportunity. It looked like they were going to try and pin him back. He got, saw a great return on that far side of the football field. Opportunity to almost break it. Both uh, coaches, I think obviously everybody concerned, realized their speed on both sides of this football field. They figure they'll sacrifice 10 yards versus a, a 65-yard return. I want to thank uh, Adrian tonight on camera. Yep. He's doing a bang-up job. Guy's doing fantastic. The great white buffalo beside <clears throat> me, Mr. Bison Oaks. He's becoming like a legend. Every, I, I was out at the store. I was at Sheets, and I heard people talk, and they said, hey, I was listening to that Explore broadcast. You hear about this bison guy? And I didn't say a word. I just kind of passed by. So the popularity is picking I, up. I hear next week as we arrive at whatever stadium it's going to be, they're going to play Great White Buffalo as he comes in. <laughs> Ted Nugent. Here's the kickoff. They're going to kick this one deeper. Klaus comes up, and it gets by Klaus. That's a live football. Klaus is going to pick that up at the 15. Gives up some yards. And he's going to be dropped all the way back near the 13-yard line. So that's where Red Bank will take over. Yeah, deep, deep in their own territory. Great coverage there. So Port kind of surprising Red Bank there to kick that one deep. So the Bulldogs will start at about, they're going to say officially, about their 14-yard line is where the ball's resting. Crisp night here at Red Bank Valley's uh, football field. Brr. How's that sound? Well, we're we're roughing it tonight. We wanted to join Tyler up top. Instead of being all warm in the press box. Here's Bain out of the shotgun. Pitches that out to Schreckengoss. Here's Schreckengoss. Lowers the shoulder. Bounces off a tackle. Rolls to the left side. He never went down. Nice run by Schreckengost. He was going to be dropped for a loss, but instead he's going to pick up about two as he goes up to the 16-yard line. we got to take a closer look at this one. Yeah, that was just a fantastic play. He's look at this. Right yep. and never hits. <laughs> Looked like that one time Bob ran into a telephone pole with his car. <laughs> Second down and about eight here for the Bulldogs, but a – Fantastic run by Schreckengoss. It was only two yards, but boy, I'll tell you what. Love the effort. Nice job. Here's Schreckengoss again, knocking off tackles, racing out for a first down as he takes that football out to about the 30 yard line. That's about a 14 yard pickup for him. And a first down here for the Bulldogs. Yeah, I expected to see him go give a heavy dose of Schreckengoss. And again, what this does, eventually it's going to lull that defense a little bit into playing run first and foremost open something up nice go right back to him don't be afraid to stay with him ball resting at the 30 they're going to go right back to Shrek and Gust. here's Shrek and Gust breaking tackles and he'll take it for about uh, three almost four up to 61 yards here in the ball game ball out at the about the 34 yard line is where it'll be 11 touches
This is Aqua Motors third quarter here on the EYT Media Network. Glad you could be with us here tonight. Explore Clarion, explore our D9sports.com. Twins out to the right for Bain, single receiver off to the left side. Going to go right back to Schreckengost. Here's Schreckengost. He's got some room. First down, Schreckengost to the 45 and then out of bounds. They're going to give him about the 47-yard line. Good run by him. That's a gain of 14 again. He is in a groove right now. Feed the boy till he can't eat. You know, sometimes as the game goes on, some running backs will get stronger. I think you're seeing evidence of that right here. He's just in, in that rhythm, in that zone. Very tough guy to bring down. Bain to Shrek and Gost again. How about Shrek and Gost? First down carry inside the 45 and down to about the 43-yard line of uh, Port Allegheny. And moving the chains. About 12 on the carry that time for him. Clock to 940 here in the third quarter. Red Bank leads by one. And the only reason why they're taking a little bit of a break right now is to let Shrek and Goss catch his breath a bit. I see is that sidecar to the right. Same setup with the twins right. Single receiver left. Bain barks the signals. You can see that last play. You saw the both inside backers crashing right away, playing run first and foremost. Bain takes the snap, hands it right back to Schreckengost. Here he is banging his way for another first down. All the way down to about the 30-yard line. We'll see where they spot him out of bounds along the sideline. And they're going to say it's down around the 28. That's about 16. It is. You were surprised. I, I was a little <laughs> nervous for you. There were three defenders laying down involved in that tackle. They're feeling the punishment. Now you're going to see three backers inside pinching tight. Ball to 28. Bain again in the shotgun. How about Shrek and Gost again over the right side? Big hole. Shrek and Gost lowers the shoulder, stays up on his feet, and he gains about nine as he takes it down to about the 19-yard line. So second down and about one here for the Bulldogs as Schreckengoss puts them in the Dubrook red zone. Actually, they're going to give him the full 10 on that They're going to say it. Yeah, I thought he was going to be a little shy, but they're going to give it to him. They're going to say he picks her up. So that's closer to the 18-yard line. And there's an injured uh, Port Allegheny player there in the backfield. Clock will stop at 843 here. So Red yes. Bank coming out in this first possession, really doing a nice job. Yeah, doing a great job in what's happened. Mike is play-by-play -play guy. It's oftentimes hard for you to focus on players away from the actual football. That time, the last probably three plays, you're seeing the inside backers first and foremost take, take a step forward to come up and plug that hole. The only problem is he is still getting by you, even though you're reacting to it. Now, what is going to begin to happen, you know, Red Bank probably is going to come right back with another run. They may look within two, three plays to go ahead and take one to the air a little bit because you'll be caught off guard. Again, it's just something that happens. You get in that lull, you, you begin to cheat and think you're going to get a little bit of an extra edge by taking that step forward, and you'll, you'll wind up paying the price. So Moses. And that is a big loss potentially there as Moses will have to exit at least for one play. Yeah, he's limping a little bit, but seems to be smoothing out a little bit as he heads toward the sideline. Best wishes, of course, for him. <clears throat> so here goes Red Bank, 8.43 to go. Here in this third quarter. Brendan Trekkengost in the backfield now with Bain. And they're going to give it to Brendan Trekkengost over the left side. How about him? Spins around. He's knocked out of bounds. And he'll take that football down to about the 11-yard line. That's a gain of about seven. And sets up a... Second down on about three. Again, a nice little change of pace back. A 
Yeah, it's going to be a false start. Yeah, there's a whistle on the play. So the penalty will bring it back five yards. Goes back to about the 16-yard line. And uh, checking back in is Ray Schreckengost. Got his breather. And right away gives the line a hand because he knows without their hard work up front, he would not have the success he's had tonight. 113 yards on the ground, 15 attempts. Ball back at the 16-yard line. He and off Schreckengost right up the middle. He's to the five and inside the five. It's a first and goal for Red Bank Valley. He'll have it around the three-yard line. That's a gain of about 14 for him again. 127 on the night. And the Bulldogs knocking on the door here. Ball to three, and I'm sure they'll just give it to Shrek and Gossel, maybe allowing him to put the exclamation point on it. He spins around, and he does. How about that? Exclamation point for him. Touchdown. Ray Shrek and Goss goes three yards. Now that is the way you script out an opening drive. And running the football effectively, that's actually a page out of Port Allegheny last week, Mike. It would almost remind you of the Yeah, that whole drive. They had. Downs is on for the extra point try. Kick is up, and that kick is good. And Red Bank will lead it now by a score of 20. Two to 14 over uh, Port Allegheny. That comes with 8-12 to go here in the third quarter. And uh, we'll just hold it right here. As Red Bank Valley now goes up. They were up by the point. Now they're up by that 22-14 margin. Winner of this one will move on next week in the championship game. It'll either be Union AC Valley or Smithport in that one. And we'll get scores here coming up as we go through the evening. Dustin Kiefer's over there with uh, Larry Weiser bringing that one to you. Uh, Carn City was beating uh, Central Clarion. <clears throat> so Carn City would be taken on either Brookville or Ridgeway in the AA championship next week. We might have a couple coming your way depending on how they kind of uh, – Schedule those games. Yeah, quick glance. That Zocker Motor scoreboard still. It's Carn City 28, Central Clarion 0. That in quarter number three. Ridgeway now up 10 to nothing over Brookville. Union AC Valley 7, Smithport 0, and Bedford 27, Clearfield 12. That at the half. Downs the kick. Archer's the deep man. Kickoff is short. And it bounces. That ball's live. Oh, but that was Chase Weimer getting on top of that football quickly for Port Allegheny. Wow, and if Weimer's not there, would have been an easy recovery. Mansfield in the area, but Weimer on top of that one. So they'll have nice field position at about the 39-yard line on the Port Allegheny side of the football. 8-11 to go here in the third, 22-14 as Red Bank leads. Yeah, crazy spin on that, on that football. You know, kind of a, took an unusual hop. Good recovery by Port. Moses in there on this series. <clears throat> Trips off to the left side. Archer's on that left side. Watch for him as well. Evans out of the shotgun. He's looking to the left side. Flushed out of the pocket. Head flag on the play. It's going to be a hold also in addition to the sack. And Bulldogs right away. The sideline, the entire sideline knew it was a hold. I think everybody in the vicinity of this football field realized that was a hold, but and they're going to decline, decline the it. penalty. Yep. We'll take the down. And again, uh, tough sledding once again for quarterback Evans. Loss of about uh, seven, almost eight on the play. He is now minus 27 as he's been sacked a couple of different times. Ball's back at about the 32-yard line. Evans out of the shotgun, second down, 18. Evans pumps, steps up. Evans, and he's sacked again. Let's Another see. loss. A little bit of a team meeting back there, team defensive huddle. Back to about the 28-yard line. That's a loss of four, almost five. So now it's third down and a long, long way. 
I think Brandon Ross leading one of the guys leading the way back there. Third down and about 24 here for Port Allegheny. Boy, this is where, you know me, I'm old school. I'm going to run something simple like a draw, just try and catch them off guard, maybe get a real estate play, trying to help the special teams out a little bit. Twins on each side. They're going to send the man in motion. That was Archer. Evans dances around, fires across the middle of the field, and it's incomplete. He tried to get it into Styles. And on fourth down, we'll have a punt coming up. Yeah, that was that pass was really hurried. Didn't have the opportunity to get the feet set, to get focused, to find his hot receiver. You know, the Bulldog defense is a lot like shark in the water that senses blood. Going right after him. Bulldogs Button. wanting to get another big return. They've had success with this. Tonight, button to punt, gets it away, and it's going to bounce at about the 45, and picked up and immediately hit. The ball comes out. Wow. And that was just a big hit coming up to make the play. We got to take a look at this, partner. Yeah, it was a it was a clean hit. It was just uh, oh yeah, just a good solid hit. Yeah, yep. I don't know about it. That was Miska Young. I remember last week Young actually had credit for a rush because he had fumbled or he recovered a fumble. That was the Kale, side. who came up to get the ball and he took that hit immediately. And they're going to check him out there on the bench. Yeah, Miska Young delivering the hit. Big time hit. And that's why I'd never be a return guy. No. But Red Bank will have it in great field position, and they'll have it at their own 45-yard line. They lead 22-14, 6.44 to go here in the third. Bain hands that football off. Here's Schreckengoss with it. Bang in his way, takes it up to midfield. That's a gain of about six on the play for him, and uh, ball just on the other side of the 50-yard line. You know, Schreckengoss has been running with authority, and I, I guarantee if you talk to him, one of the first things he's going to say is the reason why it's his offensive line play. These guys have done a phenomenal job opening up protection. Bain looks to throw, fires the football down the right side, and it is caught! It is caught on the right side. On that in is Marshall. Yep. I had to look to see who that was. Hard to see that nine there, that dark jersey, but that to catch... Puts it a first down at about the 25-yard line. So Red Bank Valley driving, six minutes, the clock turning, trying to put themselves up by a couple of scores here. Now Red Bank taking their time. Well, they know it's a golden opportunity, don't want to risk it. Eight on the down clock. Gives it to Shrek and Goss on this side. He's going to be driven backwards and a loss on the play. They'll give him his forward progress, but that'll be a loss. One of the few losses you'll see uh, from him. And it's a loss of close to three back near the 28-yard line. I think go dial, dial up one of those plays about 12, 13 yards down the field. Going to get some personnel in, and they're switching it up. Going to have Mansfield in. Mansfield probably going to take this direct snap. We saw this during the course of the regular season. Different times. Plenty of time on the clock. Down to 11. So Mansfield in the backfield along with Schreckengost. Ball snap back to Mansfield. He's going to keep it. Mansfield looks to run. Mansfield hitting the backfield. Mansfield's going to be dropped for a loss of a couple more. That'll push him back to the 30-yard line. So it'll set up a third down here in 15 for the Bulldogs. Yeah, wanted to try something a little different, a little wrinkle, a little change of pace. Port well defended with their reaction defensively. Bain back in. Excuse me, Bain. Looks to the right side. Mansfield down there, fight for the ball, tipped away. Good defensive play, too. And that's incomplete. It's a fourth down. 
I would imagine the offense stays here. Uh, yeah, I think you got to keep it on that <clears throat> that pass intended down there for Marshall. And Marshall really turned into a defensive back on it as well. So 4-12, clock stops on the incomplete pass. Marshall's wide out to the right, Twins out to the left. Here's Bain in the shotgun formation, fourth and 15. He's going to quick kick it. And it comes down inside the five, and it's going to go into the end zone. It will come out to the 20-yard line, so that's where Port will have the football. It's 22-14 with 4.07 to go here in the third quarter here from Red Bank Valley High School. It wasn't a bad idea, that quick kick. That's been a staple down here for the Bulldogs ever since Gas was the quarter. That was, what, about 1928? That's when Tyson, the, the Tyson. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Tyson. Oh. <laughs> the cold's getting to you. It's getting to you. That's what I was going to say. That's when the bison were roaming freely down here, Mike. You're going to go home, hop in bed. Your wife's going to say, get out of here. Your feet are freezing. <laughs> Uh, the cats will even be scared whenever I get home. Well, that's probably true. So Port Allegheny will have the football. They'll have it at their own 20-yard line. Seems to be a little, I'm going to guess, an equipment problem. As Moses trots to the sideline. <clears throat> so the coaching staff really looking for an explanation. It's almost got to be a, an equipment issue. And we're just about ready to go. Evans works in a pistol setup. First and 10 from the 20. Evans, quick throw. It is caught on the left side. That's Archer. First down. And he'll be tripped up. He'll get about, uh, they're going to say steps out. He'll get about 12 or 13 on the pass play. That's an Allegheny grill first down. You know, that's a play really that uh, this group has needed. Mike, just the shot in the arm here. Football. At about the 32, maybe 33-yard line. <clears throat> Thought we might see Red Bank try and dial up a little extra pressure. Just Evans. have that 22 to 14 lead. Looks to throw again, flushed out of the pocket, rolls to the right side, his throw, it is caught. And then forced out of bounds. And that is a Moses with the catch. And we'll see where they spot that football. It is a gain of about four on the play. Sets up a second in the, in the about, well, it's probably about three, second down and seven. It's a tough Tough yards there, a lot of contact. Ball just across the 35-yard line up near the 36. That was a pretty good job there, Evans, really, I think, just to chuck the rock before a potential sack. Evans in the shotgun. Quick throw, caught by Archer. First down, out across the 45, dropped at about the 46-yard line. Noah Archer with the catch and a first down. And Port Allegheny wanted to call there at the end some little extracurricular stuff, but no flag. Sonia Archer is a guy that's got some serious wheels. He gets into the open. Very dangerous, can make you pay the price. So Port Allegheny is on the drive now. The ball sitting at their own 46-yard line. They trail 22-14 to Red Bank Valley. Down to just four and a play clock, and I have to hurry to get this one off. Going to give that to Moses over the left side. Moses turns the corner, and Moses is dropped shy of the first down marker, I think. We'll see where the spot is. It'll be close. Yeah, that's where the chain gang was a little self-defense there, protecting themselves, had to drop the chains and bail out. I think he's going to be just shy. Yeah, they're going to put him at the 45-yard line of Red Bank Valley. So are they going to say it's gonna a first move down? It, yeah. Yep, they'll move it. So he'll get 10 yards. <clears throat> I 
So Port Allegheny keeping this drive alive. Another first down for the Gators. Trips off to the right single receiver to the left. Here's Evans out of the shotgun. Hands the football off. Moses again with the carry. He'll take it up the middle and picks up uh, a couple yards to about the 43-yard line of Red Bank Valley. Mike, as we looked at Zuckerman scoreboard, got us some uh, key updates here. It is Union AC Valley now 14 to nothing over Smithport. Carn City 28, Central Clarion 7, Ridgeway 12, Brookville 0. Second out and eight. Here's Evans looking to throw. And the pass, it is caught. That's Archer. And another first down as he takes it close to the 30-yard line. Flag comes in late on the play. Hang on. And the chain gang has to get back in place, but we will let the official sort this one out. Yeah, the official was actually slipping as he was trying it, to I believe it's against that. the Bulldogs, but. Ball was down inside the 30-yard line. They're pointing. <clears throat> and we're still waiting for an explanation. Dead ball personal foul against the Bulldogs. And that's going to push that ball another 15 yards. And yeah, they're... Basically saying gave him an elbow. Yep. The explanation. Remember years ago, the NFL game, giving him the business. Yeah. So that ball's going to be placed all the way down at about the 14-yard line. It is a first and 10. They're in the Dubrook red zone. Some of Bob's friends are beeping the horn as they go by. So the ball at the 14. Moses is in the backfield here with Evans. While he's out to the right, trip receivers out to the left. Watch over there because Archer's on that side as well. Evans hands that ball to Moses. Moses hits a wall and he's going to be dropped. He'll lose about a yard back to the 15-yard line. Second down and 11. Yeah, time, it just looked like the handoff wasn't crisp and clean between Evans and Moses. He didn't get that surge, wasn't able to get the legs churning. So second down 11 from the 15-yard line of Red Bank Valley. Clock down to a minute 39 to go here in the quarter. It's going to be a heck of a finish here at Red Bank Valley. They don't go anywhere. A lot of action left. Evans out of the shotgun, looks to throw. Fires the football. It's caught. And coming up with the catch, that was a Styles with the catch. Yeah, nice chunky yardage there. Or was that Wiley? Nope, that was Styles. That was Styles. They had Isaiah Wiley out there too. So third down, that gain was about six, almost seven. Third down at about four. Ball snap back to Evans. Looks to the right side, battle in the end zone. It goes out of bounds. So fourth down. Fourth down with that football sitting at about the eight-yard line. The conservative part of me likes to think, Mike, you know, I probably would have been looking to run chisel away half of that, knowing that I was going to go for it on fourth down. Now you're almost forced into a pure pass play because the yardage is, is too much to try and pick up on the ground. But well, they need to go from the eight to the four. And here we go. It is a fourth down for Port Allegheny. We'll see what Red Bank can do here. Big play. Evans looks to throw. Flushed out of the pocket. Fires into the end zone. And it is incomplete. Boy, it was almost caught down there. You talk about close. That's about as close as you can come up with without actually hauling in that football. So Red Bank Valley will take over on downs with 40 seconds to go here in the quarter. This is where you got to be really careful here as well. But somehow, I won't bet you steak dinner. Besides, you won't pay up anyways. 
Well, uh, I think Ray Schreckengoss is probably going to get football here. What do you think? I would say so. <clears throat> Ball around the eight. There seems to be a little confusion as they're Got to get waiting some guys for the personnel. Ross checks in quickly. Still nine on the play clock. Bain hands that to Schreckengoss. Here's Schreckengoss with that football and gets ahead of steam and takes that for a butt. Close to nine as he takes it up across the 15 and up to about the 16-yard line. That's his 20th touch of the football. He's got 141 on the night. And that mm. will if you're be... you're Red Bank, you're not going to snap no the football. Way. Yep, they're going to come to the sideline. do, shame line. on you. So Red Bank will just let the clock run down, down 10, down to nine. They looked at the official. They say, we're not going to do anything here, and we'll get set to take a timeout. We'll go to quarter number four. Red Bank leads it here. 22-14, we'll switch sides of the football field and come back with quarter number four. And you're watching Carly Tire High School Football. It's right here on Explore Clearing at D9Sports.com. in the playoffs to all our local football teams. From your one-stop car, truck, and SUV dealer, Clarion Ford Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. Visit us on Main Street in Clarion or start online at clarionauto.com. Best of luck in the playoffs to all our local football teams. From your one-stop car, truck, and SUV dealer, Clarion Ford Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram. Visit us on Main Street in Clarion or start online at clarionauto.com. Best of luck in the playoff. You're locked on to the EYT Media Network. All right, back at Red Bank Valley. We go to quarter number four. It is a Clarion County Community Bank fourth quarter. Red Bank Valley will have the football. Second down here in about two for the Bulldogs. Uh, two or one, depending on where you're looking. Ball at the 15-yard line. Here's Schreckengost. And he'll have the first down as he takes it out. And he'll need about two, but instead he's going to gain close to four as he takes it out near the 20-yard line. Oftentimes in those second short situations, some teams want to be aggressive this time. I think it's a smart move. Coach Gould and his staff wanting to pick up the short first down and move the chains. First and 10, new set of downs. Allegheny Grill first down here for the Bulldogs. They're going to pitch this football on that jet sweep, and that goes to Minnick, but a flag is thrown. If, it, if it's good. Yeah, it looks like it'll be a hold here against the Bulldogs. And that'll back them up to 10 yards. <clears throat> Yeah, that's the one thing, of course, you did not want to see as a Bulldog, an infraction. Backs him up near the 10, and they're going to say the 11. So first and 20 here for the Bulldogs. Fourth quarter clock rolling here. Bulldogs up 22-14. Here's Shrek and Goss racing right up the middle, breaking tackles, kept the hand down and gets him back great yardage up across the original line of scrimmage at the 20 and up near the 22 yard line that's a gain of about 12 for him oh was he close there partner he's about a half a step away from still being running second out and eight here for red bank valley ball at their own 22 yard line red bank now it's taking a page out of the playbook of Port Allegheny is they're using all of that clock here. The clock management 101. 
End it off, Shrek and Gost. It's a wall, spun around. And he's going to be dropped. Did the ball come out? No, they're going to say the ball did come out. But I believe Red Bank still has it is what the official signals. That was a pretty good stick that time by Peyton Stiles. Kind of a little bit undersized compared to Shrek and Goss. Boy, he stuck him hard. He kind of on an <laughs> island out there. If you don't make the play, you know, it's going to be a pretty good chunk of yardage that Shrek and Goss would be able to pick up. So third down still about, eh, still about eight. It's a long eight is what it is. Ball to 21. Here's Bain looking to throw. He's got a man breaking down the middle of the field. It's Minnick and he brings it in. It's caught. Down to the 43-yard line of Port Allegheny. That'll change the field position. It's a big time throw and catch there. And the chains move. Now, obviously, you're, you're certainly going to try and put points on the board here, but regardless, whether you do or you don't, field position has changed. Ball's at the 42-yard line of Port Allegheny. First and 10 here for the Bulldogs. They're going to run that sweep again. They're going to pitch that football. And Minnick again getting the carry and is going to be spun around and dropped. But positive yardage down to about the about the 37-yard line. It's a gain of four. Uh, well, wait, excuse me, that is not four. That's a gain of s about five. Sets up a second down here and still about five here for the Bulldogs. Bob gave me that look. He was, he was starting <laughs> to write stuff down. I've learned over the years. Let's take a little dramatic pause myself as I go to fill in the stat sheet. Second and five. Football at a 37-yard line. They're going to run Minnick again on the sweep. They're going to pitch to him again. No, nope. they fooled everybody, gave it to Schreckengoss, but Port stayed home that time, and uh, Schreckengoss will get about a yard as he goes down near the 36-yard line. Sets up a third down, and... Looks like about a long four. Ball just shy of the 35-yard line. Twins left, single receiver to the right. That's Marshall out to the right side. Third down and four. Shrek and Gost. Shrek and Gost gets the four and more. Still dragging tacklers inside the 20, down to about the 17-yard line. And that's a pickup of about 19 for him. And they're going to move the chains again. Red Bank set up here in the Allegheny or the Dubrook red zone. I think you're going to see Port right now probably take some chances on that defensive side because they realize the time is not on their side. Cannot afford another touchdown. Bulldogs should continue to milk time off of this down clock. They're at the 16-yard line of uh, Port Allegheny. Bain takes the snap, gives that ball to Schreckengost. Here's Schreckengost banging for a couple yards up the middle. But the 16 goes down near the 14-yard line. Give them a couple. Second down here in eight. Clock under seven minutes now. Red Bank Valley taking their time, churning out a few yards at a time, using all that clock. Schreckengost, by the way, up now to 180, uh, officially 180. It's going to get some state looks, I'll tell you that, as far as like some players of the week. You know, just the, the outstanding effort on his part, will, the determination. Right back to him. Over the right side, almost bust the tackle there. Takes it down to about the 11-yard line. That's a gain of four more. You know, when you're a defender out there and you see a running back like that and he comes at you, you know it's coming. He still picks up four yards. It just frustrates the living daylights out of you defensively. Now, Magentini will check in. Now, the element, of course, he brings in. He is the runner. He's no stranger to that quarterback position. 
Third down close to five. The ball resting at the 11-yard line here of Port Allegheny. Red Bank on the drive. Mandantini is in. Going to send Minnick in motion. They're going to hand that football off. That's Shrek and Gost over the left side, and Shrek and Gost is going to be dropped shy of the first down marker. We'll see where they spot him. It looks like right around the seven or eight yard line would be a pickup of about three, almost four. So fourth down, Red Bank now. I suspect you'll see Mantini stay in the ball game again. He's that running quarterback, brings that element, can also throw. Here's Magentini out of the shotgun. Tried to bark the signals and pull Port off sides, but they, they hold. No need to rush it. Fourth down, a long one. 13 on that down clock. Ball snap back to Magentini. He's going to keep it over the right side. A flag on the play. Magentini would have the first down. He's inside the five, but we'll see what the flag is. I think you're going to see a hold based on the way the defender wound up going down. Still 4.50 to go here in the fourth quarter. Clarion County Community Bank fourth. Oh, that looks like they're calling a chop block. So an illegal block going against the offense. This will back them up. So it'll be fourth down again. <clears throat> looks like Magentini will exit. They're giving some instructions to Bain. He'll come back out on the field. That yeah, ball's yeah, tough break there. Yeah, going to come back out to about the 22-yard line. Yeah, so certainly way too long to attempt a, a field goal. So fourth and about 15 or 16 is what it looks like. <clears throat> Ball to 22. Got to get down close to the five for the first down. Bain fires. Caught by Minnick. Touchdown. Bob Minnick on the right seam. And he's in for the touchdown. That'll go 21 yards. Minnick goes in there. Archer a little shaken up. Oh, talk about that's a big time play right there. And with this 4.46 to go, that comes late here in this uh, fourth quarter. Downs is on for the extra point try. Kick is on the way, and the kick this time is no good. So that makes it 28-14 in favor of Red Bank Valley, so they get the two-score lead, and that's important with this 4.46 to go. Just getting caught up here on my scoring summary. And the downs kick, of course, was no good. We still have 4.46 in this one before it's in the books. <clears throat> Going back to that last touchdown. On the tackle, a lot of contact on that tackle. Good clean hit, good clean play. Archer, you could see, I had the, the glasses on, Mike, you could see. Certainly felt that hit, but he bounced up. So we can take a look at that touchdown one more time. Came down there, bam. Nice job. So down set to kick things off. Archer's the deep man. Appreciate Bison Oaks in the replays. Oh, I don't believe that's Archer back there. Oh, we'll see here. Is that eight? Six. Six. And it's kicked short anyway. Picked up by Weimer, and he's just going to take a knee on the far side. So 4.44 to go. Red Bank Valley has a two-score lead. They're up here 28-14. Port Allegheny still has three timeouts. And now there has to be, if you're on the offensive side, it does have to be a sense of urgency, the fact that you have to get two scores. Back certainly is against the wall, and, of course, defensively you're out there, you're starting to lick the chops because you know it's kind of a free path. Be aggressive. Big key here, if you're in the secondary, you better not let any receiver behind you. Allow them to make the catch short. Make them take time off the clock. 
Ball at the 31-yard line here for the Gators of Port Allegheny. They need a quick strike here with 4.44 to go down by the 14 points. And we get a timeout taken by Port Allegheny. They didn't like something out there, so the timeout for the Gators. And Yeah, that's a tough one to take because you needed to save that later on as the drive unfolds. But the drive may not unfold if, if you didn't have the right personnel or right guys in place. So obviously, put the brakes on, take a deep breath. What to remind you two coming up tomorrow here on the EYT Media Network. Tyler, Mike Kilroy are going to be over at Slippery Rock High School. It is Greensburg Central Catholic and Clarion Area in girls uh, quarterfinal volleyball. And that'll be happening tomorrow. Two o'clock is the match time. They'll be on the air about 10 minutes beforehand. That should be a good one. I wish I could be there, but I got to travel down to West Virginia, finish up the CUP season. So those guys are going to do a fantastic job. Big uh, update here in that Zucker Motors scoreboard. Union AC Valley 14, Smithport 8. That's Union AC 14, Smithport 8, 11:51 quarter number four. Evans steps up into the pocket, flushed out, fires the football. It is caught. And that's Archer making the catch. That guy is tough. Picks up about five yards on the play. Uh, closer to six. <clears throat> Second down at about four. Evans has 175 on the night. Yep, fires the football again, and it's incomplete this time. Knocked away. So third down. Now it's four down territory from here on out. So he takes the guesswork out of it. Third down, still about uh, eh, it's a sh long three, short four. <clears throat> Ball resting at about the 38-yard line. Clock at 417. Evans takes the snap, hands the football off, and that's handed off, and Moses got the carry, and he's going to be dropped. No gain on the play at all. Yeah, just uh, unable to get anything going right. Again, they know that they're going to go for it on fourth down, hoping to catch, catch the Bulldogs off guard. If they pick up five, six, could move the chains there, but now forced here in a fourth and long situation. Yeah, fourth and a closer to four now. Evans takes the snap, under pressure, dumps it off, picked Pick. off, it's intercepted. And Red Bank... Will take over down around the 20-yard line. I think that was Schreckengast on the interception. Marshall. Marshall. Marshall with the interception. So Marshall had the interception. Bob had the glasses up and saw it good. So the Bulldogs look to put things away here with 3.36 to go. They have the football at the Port Allegheny 20-yard line. That's a great example of the scouting and paying attention as the coaches go over everything. He had already broke on the pass prior to it being released. If you look at the replay real quick, Mike, you can take a good, quick look at that. Madentini is in there again for the Bulldogs. From the 20, they're in the uh, Dubrook red zone already. Send the man in motion. They're going to keeping the football. Now the pitch. And uh, not a lot. Kale took the pitch, and he's going to take that football to a about the 17-yard line, maybe. It's a pickup of around three yards. So it's up a second down here in about seven. And that's okay, because as long as he holds on the football, you're going to milk time off the clock. You're down to 3.05 now. Badantini. Stands and he's going to wait. He's going to let that clock run. Imagine a football smart guy. Gives it to Schreckengoss. Busted! Touchdown, Bulldogs. Schreckengoss gets the score. And he'll go 17 yards on the touchdown. And that. Puts Red Bank up by three scores with 2.44 to go. 
Yeah, that'll be the dagger right there. Downs is on for the extra point try. Kick is on the way, and the kick is up, and that kick is good. 35-14, Red Bank Valley leads. And we'll take a timeout. You're watching Carly Tire High School Football, and it's live right here on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. My name is Jason, and welcome to Sweet Basil. Come on in. You're locked on to the EYT Media Network. Back here at Red Bank Valley. <clears throat> Down set to kick things off. Ball kick short. Taken on the far side again. We've seen Weimer a few times. Bringing the ball back here for Port Allegheny. 2.40 to go. As we look at that Zucker Motor scoreboard, we do have a final tonight. It is Carn City winner 35 to 7 over Central Clarion. So again, that's the final score there. Ridgeway has extended their lead against Brookville midway through the quarter number four there. Ridgeway 19, Brookville 0. Union AC Valley 14, Smithport 8. Looks like that'll be a Carn City and Ridgeway double A final coming up next week. And right now it appears with Red Bank Valley up by the three scores with 240 to go. The low eight, who's gonna come out? From Union and Smithport, here's a draw play, handed off. And Moses gets the carry, and he'll spin around, gets about two yards is all. Now yeah, maybe one. Yeah, tough sledding tonight. 11 attempts there for Moses, just 17 yards. Second down a long nine here for Port Allegheny. Evans fires the football to the right side. It is caught. And coming up with the catch, that was Wiley on the far side. He's shy of the first down marker. He picks up about eight on the play, and it sets up a third down and one. Ball sitting at uh, the 41-yard line. Minute 50 to go in this one. Ball snap back, hands it off again, and this time Moses is going to be stood up, and he'll lose yardage back. At about the 39-yard line. Fourth down now for the Gators. And the ball game's right here. Fourth down and about three. Here's Evans in the shotgun formation. Evans looks to throw, steps up. Evans looking, looking, dumps it off, and it is incomplete and uh, red bank valley will take over with a minute 17 and folks that is the ball game red bank valley up 35 14 will move on to the title game next week and you'll see the victory formation take place of course that'll be against either union ac valley or smithport and we'll get updates as we go through here the post game show Herring County Community Bank, our fourth quarter sponsor. Red Bank Valley, as Bob said, in the victory formation. And they take the knee. And we'll watch the clock run. Red Bank Valley trailing 14 0 to start this ball game. And they come out here with the win. 35 to 14 over Port Allegheny. 
We'll have to take a quick break uh, here momentarily. Once we go to the end of the quarter, Bob will get things totaled up. And then we'll wrap things up in the First United National Bank postgame show. And then we'll figure out how to thaw my feet out. <laughs> and there's the knee. That's the last one. And that's your ball game, folks. Red Bank Valley moves on to the championship game coming up next week. And we have the post game coming up. Bob's going to total it all up. We'll take a break. And when he's ready, we'll come back and we'll get things wrapped up for you. 35-14 Red Bank Valley over Port Allegheny. And you are watching Carly Tire High School football right here on Explore Clarion and D9Sports.com. Zocro Motor Truck Sales in Clarion is an international Diamond Ed certified service department. As one of only 276 such shops in all of North America, you can be sure that when your medium or heavy duty truck needs service, the job will be done correctly at Zocro Motors. Our work is guaranteed nationwide at any international truck dealer and our parts and service prices can't be beaten. Our technicians are factory trained and factory certified. Don't trust a shop that just thinks that they can make repairs. Come to Zockrell Motors Diamond Edge Certified Service Department. If it's maintenance you need, click ZockrellMotors.com or call us for a quote on those jobs too. Our prices are great. Best of all, you know the repair is done right and it's guaranteed. Get your truck service work done at Zockrell Motor Truck Sales, two miles north of exit 64 Interstate 80 in Clarion. How cold it is outside, you can keep warm and toasty inside with a built-in-the-USA super-efficient furnace from Luton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Affordable, quiet, and reliable, you can count on your furnace from Luton's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Red Bank Chevrolet, the area's number one Chevrolet dealer and Clarion County's truck headquarters. So if you're in the market for a new or used Chevrolet car, truck, or SUV, go to Red Bank Chevrolet, 500 Broad Street in New Bethlehem, or online redbankchevrolet.com. Skilled staff at Red Bank Chevrolet is ready to meet all of your automotive needs. If we don't see you today, we'll see you at Red Bank Chevrolet. Hey Julie, nice deck. Did you get that at Tio Nesta Builder Supply? It's Tio Nesta Builder Supply, and yes, Dave, I did. Wonder if they sell siding and roofing at Tio Nesta Builder Supply. It's Tio Nesta, and yes, Tio Nesta Builder Supply has that too. Come on, Dave, you've never been there? They have two showrooms for anything home improvement. Mom got a custom kitchen there, Bill down the street got the materials for his garage. They have this awesome website, www.tianestabuilders.us. You can buy online. They really have everything for the home. Wow, I'm heading over to Tio Nesta. <laughs> I know, I know. Tianesta Builders. Tianesta Builders Supply Home Improvement Center. Family owned and operated since 1958 with locations in Tianesta and Shippenville. That sounds good. I'll check them out online at tianestabuilders.us. U.S. There we go. This is the EYT Media Network. All right, here we go. It's the first United National Bank postgame show here from Red Bank Valley High School. The final score, 35 to 14 as Red Bank Valley knocks off. Um, Port Allegheny to move on to the District 9 single-A championship game next week. And we are going to roll on here with the stats, as Bob Dunkel always does a great job with those. And they're brought to you by the Laurel Eye Clinic. Well, partner, a little surprise as far as some of the overall numbers that we're going to get to. But Port Allegheny finished with minus 10 on the ground, 183 through the air, 170 through overall. And these numbers do tell the story. Now, Drew Evans sacked a couple of different times, minus 31 yards. Plain Moses checks in 16 yards on the ground. No, Archer just five yards. Um, the running game just was not there tonight for Port. They did go through the air and have some success as 
Drew Evans, 15 of 23, two touchdowns, did have the one interception very late in the ball game. Again, with those 183 yards, hauling in receptions, no archer. A touchdown in 78 yards, 20 yards out of Peyton Styles. A.J. Wiley adding 50, 12 yards out of Peyton Spencer. Blaine Moses had three receptions for 23 yards. Also had a touchdown to go with it as well. We take a look at Red Bank Valley. Really surprising here overall numbers, Mike. Now, the overall number, 395, not a, not a surprise at all. But it was 222 on the ground, 173 in the air. That's a little bit of a surprise. But I want to tell you, Ray Schreckengoss tonight uh, really was just on fire. 204 yards in the ball game out of him. Bain checks in uh, with one yard. Ashton Kale adding three. 11 out of eight. North, seven yards out of Brendan Schreckengoss. And Joe Mansfield did have one attempt minus two. But Bain, 14 of 23 with one interception and two touchdowns as well. Again, 173 yards for Bain. Hauling in receptions. Tate Minnick, great night for him. Eight of them for 90 yards and a touchdown, eight yards out of Aiden Norts and a touchdown. Chris Marshall, 26 yards, 25 yards out of Klaus and Kale, adding 24. Again, uh, everybody, you know, total team effort offensively tonight here for the Bulldogs. Again, stats brought to you by the Laurel Eye Clinic and uh, taking a look at uh, some of the end replays in that second half brought to you by Gatesman's Auto Body. In the third quarter, Red Bank up 15-14. It was Schreckengoss at the 8-12 mark. A three-yard touchdown run. The downs kick was good, 22-14 Red Bank Valley. In the fourth quarter, Red Bank would extend the lead at the 446 mark. It was Minnick taking the pass from Bain, 21 yards for the touchdown. The downs kick was no good, though. It was 28-14. And with 244 to go in the ball game, the Bulldogs would put the seal on it as Schreckengoss would... Uh, Take that football 17 yards for the touchdown. The downs kick was good, 35-14 from there. And again, Gatesman's Auto Body is uh, responsible there for our scoring summary there of that second half. Time now for the Hager Paving Player of the Game. And, Bob, I don't think there was too much of a doubt in this one. Yeah, we got to give it to the money man tonight, Ray Schreckengoss. Three rushing touchdowns, 204 yards in the ball game. Big plays defensively. Ray Schreckengoss is your Hager Paving Player of the Game. All right, so Shrek and Goss, the player of the game, having a fantastic uh, one there. And uh, we'll be getting uh, an update. Was there an update on that Union? Um, I, I did get a text um, that says it is a final that Union was a winner, 14-8 on that one. Uh, so so next week we'll have Red Bank Valley and Union in the District 9 Single A Championship game. We'll bring it to you. So we'll have that one. And also Carn City against Ridgeway. As of right now, Ridgeway up uh, against Brookville. Looks like that'll be it. We very possibly have that one as well. We'll let you know what's going on tomorrow. Don't forget, uh, Mike Kilroy, Tyler Oaks will be over at Slippery Rock High School. It is girls' single-A quarterfinal volleyball. Bump, set, spike. That's what Tyler says. He loves it. <laughs> Anything inside, though, it's too warm for the buckskin pants, but he'll be ready to go. <laughs> I don't know. He might wear them. Yeah, you never know. A guy like People him. People chant for he him. He believes in making a fashion statement. <laughs> <laughs> that match is set to get underway at 2 o'clock, and they'll be on the air about 10 minutes before that with that one. So good luck to uh, the Lady Bobcats tomorrow in that one. we got Red Bank Union next week, Carn City Ridgeway, and the other double-A game. Bob, I'll tell you what. Going to be a lot of fun coming up here tomorrow next week. And hey, how about getting us out of here? You know, do appreciate those good folks here, Lumber 2, uh, taking, helping take care of us, bringing you this broadcast here from Red Bank Valley tonight. Special thank you to a couple of new camera guys, Ad, Adrian and Zane tonight, doing a, a great job on camera. Tyler Oaks, uh, commonly known as Bison Oaks, stepping up. Once again, being a director, having a little bit of fun with us along the way. I want to thank my broadcast partner, Mike Kalinowski. This is Governor Bob Dunkel saying, hey, Let's be careful out there. Have a great.